Yo, what is going on, Papa Fam? Welcome back to the channel. It's your boy Sunny, and today we are back. First video of 2023, and it's gonna be a one hell of a banger, I'm telling you. It's gonna be exciting. Welcome back. Today we are building a React Native app with in-app subscriptions. So if you've ever been on an app and you've tried to go to a pro feature and a paywall's popped up, today you're gonna to learn how to build just that. And I'm telling you, it's something that you wanna know because it's one of those things that you can use to go ahead and build your million dollar app. So let me know where you're watching from right now. Get excited. I can see everyone flying in the chats. This is amazing. I love the energy. It's good to see so many familiar people. And as always, guys, welcome to the build. Let's check out a demo of what we're going to be up to today. Check this out, guys. The Fast Fit app. Welcome, everyone. I can see all the chat comments coming in. Hey, look at this. Armando Rodriguez says, yo, what's up from Texas? 5 a.m. over here catching this live. That's what I'm talking about, dude. We've got Nigeria in the house. Sovan says, yo, what's up? Romania in the house. What is up? That's good. I want to see everyone shouting out where they're from right now. Brazil, that's what I'm talking about. We've got India. We've got UK, Canada, Belgium. Ah, nice. All right, guys. Let's go look at a demo. Now, something I want to show you before we kick this demo off is that firstly, it's a pretty damn cool demo. And secondly, this is not a simulator. This is actually being run from my phone right now. So this is actually being airplayed to my computer. And there's a reason why I'm doing that. So whenever we have in-app subscriptions, there is a certain limitation and it's a bit of a, a long-winded process to set up the, uh, the simulator with this, but you can do it, but I've gone ahead and done it with AirPlay. So I'm actually gonna be showing you a real device today, which is even cooler, right? So this is actually my phone that you're seeing. <laughs> South Africa, Kenya, Spain, Ghana, Nigeria, India, Sri Lanka, Nepal, Turkey, Tunisia, that's what I'm talking about. Amaraj, oh, coming in hot with the donations. Thank you so much, dude. I appreciate you. Uzbekistan, Malaysia, that's the energy I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. We've got 200 people jumping in now. Ah, oh, it's good to see you guys. Japan, Switzerland, I missed it. Honestly, I missed the live streams. Let's dive into what we're going to be doing. So I'm going to show you a live demo of the build. So what we're going to first see is you can actually go ahead and click into any of these features. So in a normal app, you can see if I was to go ahead and look on this right now, as I mentioned, this is literally on my phone, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and click a um, one of these features. And if I have access to it, you're gonna see, hooray, you have access to this feature. We're gonna be able to go back. Now, what if I go on to something like this? So I'm gonna try and highlight this. So if I click on, right now I'm about to tap on one of these fields where it says, add an exercise, create a routine or join challenges. And you can see there's a little pro icon right there, right? So in this case, if I was to go ahead and hit one of those, so I'm gonna hit that. You can see, hang on a minute, you have to upgrade so we get a paywall. And this paywall is literally being powered by Revenue Cat. And I'm gonna show you how to do all of this right now. Now, let's say I wanna go ahead and do this, right? So I wanna go ahead and start a one week free trial, which by the way, I'm gonna show you how to do. So you can have a one week free trial, you can have a, a two day free trial, a one year free trial, whatever you wanna set up, I'm gonna show you how to do it. And you're gonna have localized pricing. So you're gonna be able to set up prices for everyone around the world in their specific currency. So I'm in Dubai right now, so you're gonna see a Dubai currency on the screen, okay? So check this out. If I go ahead and click start a one week free trial, now what you'll see is it's gonna to connect to the app store. It's gonna show an option now that's gonna pop up on the screen saying, hey, you can sign up to the pro monthly subscription with a one week free trial. And then after that, it's gonna be 22.99 dirhams per month, right? If it's in dollars, in pounds, it will show the appropriate currency. Now, for example, if I was to go ahead and subscribe, in this case, I'm gonna put in my password and as it's being uh, airplayed, you can't actually see it. So that's completely fine. So I'm gonna go ahead and pop this in right now and um, let me just do that right now so I'm just popping this in two seconds and this is a test account and I'm going to show you how to do all of this in a second as well so you're going to learn about all of this and how you can get test accounts and do all this good stuff so I'm going to click sign in right now and then what's going to happen is this is actually going to create a purchase so you can see I've now got pro okay so now what we've literally done is subscribed to the pro membership on this application, right? And what's gonna happen is it's gonna say, your, you know, your purchase was successful. Then what would happen is it will drop down in just a second and we should see an alert message on the screen saying, oh, hey, your purchase has been complete. And now I have access to add an exercise. You can see I have access to this. I have create a routine and I have access to the join challenges. So the previously blocked out things and you can see, you can confirm this by on the top right, it now says pro before it said upgrade, okay? 
What's even cooler about this is let's imagine I want to go ahead and actually change my subscription. Maybe I changed my mind. I really like this app and I want to change it to an annual subscription. In that case, what we can then do is go ahead and I've actually gone ahead and shown the paywall here as well. So I can go ahead and click on the pro button over here. So I click on pro and then we can actually click on the annual option. So now I'm going to click on the bottom option right here. And we also, I'm going to implement restore purchases, which is really cool. I'm going to show you all of this, right? I'm, I am live right now, all right? So if I click on save 46% annually and I click on this, now what it will literally do is ask to switch my membership to a year plan. And that will continue to allow me to have pro, but it will be on the yearly annual plan. And I'm going to show you how to do all of this, which is damn powerful. Trust me, you want to know how to add in in-app subscriptions because that is literally how the app store is functioning. You've got free and you've got paid apps, and then you've got free apps with in-app subscriptions and in-app purchases. That's something which you're going to want to, want to learn how to do, okay? So without further ado, let's dive into the tech stack and see what this build is about. And as I mentioned, you're going to learn how to do all of this beautiful UI on the screen. You're going to learn how to have react native navigation we are using tailwind here with native wind all right so you're going to learn how to do that and most importantly you're going to go ahead and learn um, how to handle in-app subscriptions so let's dive into in-app subscriptions why you want to use them and why you want to use revenue cat which are also really nicely sponsoring today's video right and they're actually helping us out because honestly if i'm going to use uh, in-app purchase, I am using Revenue Cat. Okay, so I am developing apps all the time and we are using Revenue Cat. So in this case, why should you care about them? What are they doing? So in this case, you're going to actually have loads of instances where you're going to have, you know, you've got iOS apps and Android apps, two different platforms, which is why we have React Native, right? And then you've got different configurations. You've got ways to set up the App Store. You've got ways to set up the Play Store. It gets kind of really tricky, right, to do all of this. This is where Revenue Cat comes in. We basically plug in all of our keys into Revenue Cat, so our App Store keys, our our um our android store keys and all that good stuff and then revenue cat is our one central platform where we can go ahead and handle everything okay so let's go ahead and dive into the reasons why so a lot of crazy huge apps if you've ever heard of notion cameo visco buffer stockfish any of these huge apps are actually using um, revenue cat to power their in-app purchases right now which is absolutely incredible and you can go ahead and get started really quickly so you can see just with a few lines of code, you can get everything running and they support loads of languages. So if you wanna do it natively on iOS, you've got Swift, if you wanna use React Native, you can use React Native, which is what we're gonna to do today, right? They've got tons of SDKs, very simple API to use. You're gonna to see today just how simple it really is. And as I mentioned, it's gonna be your single place where you're gonna get access to all of your metrics. So imagine you have people on your app store, you have people on your Play Store, and everyone's you know subscribing to your app and going ahead and getting everything set up. In this case, you have a one central place where you can see all your customers, you can see how many millions you're making a month from your app in-app purchases, all that goodness, right? And you have all of these integrations and plugins that you can then go ahead and connect to as well. So Revenue Cat is not just a little platform that helps you do a simple thing. It's actually allowing you to expand and carry out all this powerful stuff in one central place. So you can handle your in-app purchases, you can handle your customers, you can go ahead and see where your customers are from, how they interact with the app and so forth, right? And it will scale with you. So tons and tons of stuff to do with this, right? Um, so the, all, I, that's why I like to use like things like Firebase, Next.js, Vercel, because they're all built around scaling as you grow. The worst fear that I would ever have is my app becoming super successful and loads of people actually wanting to use it and then it's going to crash. That's not what you want. And there's a tons of reasons why. And I've already got questions coming up in the chat saying, what about Stripe? What about this? What about that? Look for yourself. Come on to revenuecat.com and you're going to see a bunch of reasons why. For example, Stripe do not have access to a ton of different webhooks and integrations. They have access to some, but Revenue Cat's arsenal is huge. So in this case, this is why I would recommend it, right? So you're gonna see just how easy it is to integrate this. Now, there is an amazing blog post that they've provided called Expo in App Purchase Tutorial. If you just Google this, you'll find it, and we're gonna use this today, and I'm gonna show you how we're gonna use this to get set up and everything. So it's gonna be quite easy to follow along. It's gonna be something you're gonna be able to enjoy and build alongside with me. And yeah, it's gonna be a lot of fun. So this is the Expo, this is built with Expo, by the way. Just wanted to shout that out. And if you find anything sort of, you know, over your head or too complicated, or you're kind of like, whoa, Sunny, slow down. I don't know JavaScript. I don't know React. I don't know where the hell to begin with this. Then make sure you definitely check out Zero to Full Stack Hero, our main flagship course. The link is in the description. 
And this is where we have all of our coding community awesomeness. And we have all of our content, our coaching calls, our, you know, I have tons and tons of modules in there. They're going to teach you how to go from zero all the way up to becoming a successful developer, right? So we've done it with tons of students and that's how we basically thrive, right? So our students are killing it right now. We've got nearly a thousand students inside. So it's absolutely awesome. And yeah, it's going to be a lot of fun if you join. So make sure you check this out. First link in the description and uh, I want to see you inside, okay? So first things first, what I've done is I've taken screenshots of the app, right? So we're going to go ahead and dive into today's app. And I forgot to mention as well, today's app is also going to use TypeScript. So if anyone's been wanting to learn TypeScript, then this is the video for you. So this will support TypeScript. We're going to be using TypeScript to build it. React Native as our main uh, framework. And um, yeah, we're going to build an iOS and Android app. But by the way, this tutorial is covering the iOS installation portion of the, of the uh, in-app purchases and in-app subscriptions. If you want the Android, there is awesome tutorials out there on YouTube. And if I get enough likes and comments on this video, I will make sure to go ahead and make an Android version as well. So you know what to do. Subscribe and like the video if you want to see an Android version as well. Right? But I'm going to show you how to program it in React Native. So it's going to be pretty straightforward. Okay, so we've got our screenshots for reference for our design afterwards. And right now we're going to go ahead and dive into the tutorial. So what I'm going to do is pretty, pretty much show you, and this is how I kind of do it in coaching calls. I'm going to show you how I would go ahead and do it myself, how I would go ahead and find the resources to do it. And in this case, we're going to use Revenue Cat's awesome tutorial to go ahead and do that. So in this case, the first step you want to do is make sure you have the Expo CLI installed. Right? This is a crucial step that you're going to need because you're actually going to need to be able to do things like um, set up your starter template, start up your server and all that kind of good stuff. Um, so in this case, I'm going to cut my old server. I've already installed um, Expo, so I'm not going to need to do this. Um, so Rajpreet saying this, is the live stream a bit asynchronous? Uh, so it is live right now. So we're all good. Right. So in this case, um, I'm going to go ahead and install this. So I've already installed this, but all you want to do is pop open your terminal. Pop open your terminal and go ahead and pop in the following. npm install dash g expo CLI. I've already done that, so I'm not going to do that. This will allow us to run expo commands in your terminal. Now, if you do this and um, you basically go ahead and type in expo and it doesn't work, all you're going to need to do is shut your terminal and reopen it after you've done the install, okay? Uh, if anyone's getting an audio delay, don't worry about it. They tend to fix after we're live, after the live finishes, so it's all good. Don't stress, right? Um, that's all good. All right. So now what we're going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and move my screen around so I can actually see what you guys are, what you guys are messaging. There we go. Nice. All right. So the next step is we're going to go ahead and actually initialize an app. And before we carry on any further, I'm going to explain to you something. So we are using Expo today, which is going to allow us to streamline the development process in building our app. And then what we're actually going to be doing is actually deploying the app to Expo, Expo, well, Expo, Expo application services, right? And what this will allow us to do is do something like this. We're going to be able to deploy a development build and that development build will allow us to run it on our device, but it will be connected to our Metro server. So when we're basically developing and we're basically building out the features of our app, we're gonna basically have a live version on our phone. And I'm gonna show you exactly how to set up your test device so that you can use your iOS device as your test device for your development, okay? So don't worry if it goes over your head, I'm gonna explain the steps and then you can pause the video afterwards, it's gonna be up. Okay, so let's check this out. Um, right. I know the audio might be slightly off. I don't know why. Don't worry about it. It's completely fine. Just follow the video. It's all good. And also, we've got more songs in the Papa Fan playlist. So I'm going to change up the mix right now before we carry on. Okay. So let's get started with our development. So I'm going to go into my terminal. Let's get into flow state, right? Let's do this. So I'm going to go into documents, builds. I like to do it here. You don't have to do that. I just like to throw it in there. Okay. Then we're going to go and say expo init. And I'm going to call this one revenue cap build. Or let's just say Revenue Cat um, app, and I'm going to call it YouTube, right? Then we're going to go ahead and hit enter. This is going to create a, a starter application for us, okay? So in this case, um, we get a nice little template that pops up. You've got blank, blank TypeScript, or you've got tabs TypeScript, right? Now, you can use tabs, and it will go ahead and set up React, Nav React Native navigation for you, but... 
I'm going to show you to do it from scratch because I think it's going to be more beneficial to actually show you how to add React Native Navigation to a basic app, okay? So in this case, we're going to go ahead and type in, with the arrow keys, we're going to go down to blank TypeScript and hit enter on the keyboard. Then you can see it downloads the template and it starts getting things set up, okay? Now I'm just going to go ahead and move my screens around so that way we're ready to crush this build, okay? Now, while this is doing this, I'm actually going to show you something else that we're going to need. So remember, I explained how we're going to be using something called Expo Application Services, right? Well, firstly, this is the doc. So you can go ahead for yourself and check it out at docs.expo.dev forward slash EAS, right? And then you can actually give it a read here. But in this case, we can use this to actually deploy our app to development. So we can actually have a development build. We can deploy it to production. So it can go ahead and get pushed out to the appropriate app stores. Um, in this case, we're going to be showcasing how to, to push a development build and then basically be able to test it on our phone, right? Uh, it's going to be too long of a video if I showed you the entire flow all the way to actual deployment, but we can make future videos for that, right? So we're going to prepare ourselves for that while this is happening. And you need to go ahead and install this into your computer. So in this case, you could use Yarn or you can use NPM. Just like we did Expo, I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing from um, earlier. So in this case, I'm going to open up my terminal and I'm going to paste it and I'm going to install this. Now, I've already done it, but in this case, you can you have to run that as well. OK, so make sure you install the Expo uh, EAS CLI as well. We're going to need that. Right. So next step is once this is done, it will say your project is ready. That's a good sign. You want to then CD into your app. So in this case, I'm going to CD into my app. And I'm going to type in code dot and code dot will open up VS code in our um, on our screen in the correct folder directory. So I can close the previous terminal and then I can go ahead and just set things up nicely. So that way I can have it all look in the way I want it. All right. Now, I'd highly recommend at this point that you actually prepare your screens accordingly. So you have a nice workspace. So you want to have your like your windows on one side. So you've got your design maybe like this. And then you can actually have things nicely laid out. So you can work a bit more efficiently, right? Rather than kind of going a bit crazy. And I always say this in my coaching calls as well, right? Um, oh, we got the University in Bath in the house. What is up? Um, also, guys, we just crossed over the 250 like mark. Smash that like button if you're watching this right now. We're going to get it over to 300. Keep going until 1,000. I know it's going to pass 1,000. These videos always pop because you, the React Native community is amazing. Right? Now, let's go ahead and actually get this up and running. So, first thing we want to look at is app. Or uh, well, let me make it a little bit bigger for you guys. Is app.tsx. Right? So, app.tsx. Now, here. Now, this basically. This is the traditional way to write styling in a React Native app. I personally do not like that. So I'm going to go ahead and get rid of that right now. OK, I'm going to get rid of the styles.container as well. And I'm going to get rid of style. So in this case, this is simply a very similar to a React functional component. Well, it is a functional component. It's just in React Native, except rather than divs like we were doing React for web apps, we're using the view components and the text components from React Native because what's going to happen is we have to use those special components so that way React Native knows that, okay, on an iPhone, build the text field in this way. On an Android device, build the text field in that way, okay? So it needs to go ahead and know those kind of things. So what I'm going to now do is clean up our code a bit. And now I'm going to show you how to actually implement Tailwind into this app. OK, so right now we haven't got the app running because I want to go ahead and get everything kind of prepared and organized before we do. So the first step is getting a native win installed. So that way, my goal is I should be able to write something like how we used to saying class name and I should be able to add in padding like so. And it should just work. Right. So let's go ahead and install a native win. So that way we can style our app. So first things first, I'm going to type in Tailwind and I'm going to type in uh, native win. Sorry, native win. I'm just showing you because I want to show you the whole process, right? So native win home, you can literally click it and then it's going to have some install steps on here. And if some people, I always get mixed comments about this. Why do you, why do you show all this? You don't know what you're doing. And it's not that guys. It's literally because even in coaching calls, I will completely show you how to do it in this approach rather than kind of show you, um, rather than kind of just skip all of this, because otherwise you're going to be doing it yourself and you're going to have no idea how to do it yourself, right? So in this case, you can see the docs, right? We've got the create the project. We've already done this step, 
right? We've already gone ahead and done this. Then we have to go ahead and install native wind, right? And it's peer dependency, which is of course Tailwind CSS, right? So at this point, I need to now go ahead and add it. Now they're using yarn. Let's have a quick check what we're using. So we have a yarn lock file, which means I am now using yarn. If I had a package lock file, it means I'm using um, NPM. Remember, you can switch between the two as long as you don't have two lock files because you should only really have one. Okay, so you want to make sure you only have one. If you have both, then just delete one and use the other one that's existing. And make sure if it's a package lock using NPM, if it's yarn lock using yarn. Stay consistent because there's a reason why we have lock files. Okay, make sure that all the dependencies are locked and in the right place, right? So in this case, all in the right, yeah, I'm looking into it, but yeah. Um, so at this point, I'm going to go ahead and install these. So I'm going to copy these. And also, if you like the tunes on the new Papa Fan playlist, check out, go ahead and subscribe to our email newsletter and I'll send them out. That's how we do it right now. So Command J to open up your terminal. And then I'm going to go ahead and pop this in. And now we're adding in the two dependencies. So this is native wind and Tailwind CSS. So this is going to allow us to use Tailwind CSS in our code. This is crazy. MFG Faith says, hey, mate, thanks for your amazing videos. Landed my first job a few years ago. Also, thanks to your videos. Ah, sick. That's amazing. Thank you so much for sharing that. That is so, so cool and uh, amazing stuff. Remco is actually working from home and he's watching the video on the side. That's awesome to see. Uh, welcome to all the new viewers jumping in. And again, make sure you're subscribed. If you are watching, it helps this channel grow, right? So let's go ahead and remember, smash that like button. We're about to cross over 300 likes. So at this point now, we've installed this. Cool. Let's go ahead and set up Tailwind CSS. So the next step is we have to go ahead and do MPX Tailwind CSS in it. I love this track. I'm going to restart this track. It's called East West Dance on the playlist. I'm going to go ahead and say this is a, this is a nice little background track. Okay. So MPX Tailwind uh, CSS in it. Marvin here from Nigeria. What's up, dude? So we're going to go ahead and pop this in. So MPX Tailwind in it. Right. So I'm going to go ahead and do that right now. And you can see it said it created a Tailwind config file. So command B to open up our sidebar, command J to hide our terminal. And you can see Tailwind config is now here, right? So then what we need to do is we need to tell Tailwind config that what files it basically needs to check for Tailwind stuff inside of, right? So in this case, they've, all, they've already given us a kind of a, a head start here. So I'm going to copy where they have their content. And we're going to basically change this for what we need, okay? So in this case, I'm going to go back to here. I'm going to chuck in the content field and I'm going to go ahead and get rid of this one and pop in mine. So now we've got this under uh, forward slash app. So in this case, the app.tsx file uh, with loads of different extensions to just support that. You can delete ones that you don't want, but I'll just recommend keeping it. And then we've got the custom directory. Okay. Pat Picha, what is up? We've got Papa Fam members in the house. Remember, if you want to support the channel, hit the little join button down below. And I know I can see you basically stand out from the rest, right? So um, <laughs> I love the comments coming in. All right, so at this point, we also want to support the screens folder, which we're eventually going to have. Right? And then I'm going to go ahead and take this as well, copy it. And I'm going to say, I also want a components. Right? So in this case, I'm just going to go up. I want screens and I want components because this is how I'm going to lay out my app. Right? So we've got screens and components eventually as well. So that's it. That's the Tailwind config file sorted. Let's go back. Let's go down, add the Bubble play, uh, plugin, right? So in this case, we should have a Bubble, Bubble, Bubble. I don't know how you even say it. I probably messed that up so bad, but Bubble, right? And um, in this case, we're going to go ahead into our config file and add in the following plugin, right? The Tailwind, the native wind Bubble configuration. So in this case, we have got it. We're going to go, don't add it in presets. I've done it before and I know one of you have done it as well, right? I completely just misread it and I kind of done that quickly. Daniel Ray said, I don't know how to write React Native, but I love tuning in here. Honestly, if you can write React, you can do this, right? I'm telling you, you can do it, right? It's actually not hard at all. Um, oh man, Samuel got a job as well. Awesome stuff, dude. That's incredible. Jay screenshot that. That is amazing, right? So at this point, I'm just going to, oh yeah, there we go. We've got the plugin set up and then we're going to go down and now we can start writing some code. Okay, cool. So let's actually see for ourselves, right? So what I want to do is head back over to our app. And I'm going to start typing in class and you can see we don't get the correct uh, sort of configuration as yet, yet. So I'm actually just trying to figure out where I added in the final missing piece of the puzzle. I think to be honest, what you can do here at this point is that because we've added in an entire new thing, what I'm going to do is I'm going to type in expo start. Right, so I, I like to do XP, MPX expo start. Okay. And this is basically going to start up this app. Right, so let's go ahead and start it up. And you can see it starts the project up. 
and while that's doing it and now you can see it gives me a QR code so this QR code is basically um, going to allow us to basically scan on our phone if, we're, if we had it set up in the correct way but for now we're just going to go ahead and do open W for the web right in this case oh no actually I don't want to do that I don't want to do that yet yeah no cancel that cancel that I'm not going to do it for the web today I'm going to do it for the iOS or Android okay now rather than do it this way and show you on the simulator I mean I could show you on the simulator before we do anything further i'll show you i'll actually show you how to deploy it first right let's actually do that oh no, no, no. i'll show you simulator right so i'm going to hit i on the keyboard right hit i on the keyboard open the ios simulator and then what we're going to do is we're going to load this up on a simulator first and then i'll show you the point at which we can't continue on with the simulator for a few reasons right so this will go ahead and open up a simulator for me um uh, i think i think it's going to open up my simulator hopefully it does yeah it does yeah there we go so let's go ahead and wait for my simulator device to pop open okay whenever it does it will and then we're going to be able to use our styles like so right so view class name that kind of stuff now <coughs> i'm going to go ahead and head back over so is it opening up my my simulator yet no i don't think it is okay that's annoying oh yeah there we go it's outdated would you like to upgrade oh okay yes let's upgrade fetching expo go download the expo go app all right so let this let it let us do its thing right in the meantime let's get our phone ready so that way we can actually demo this on a real device okay so the way that we're going to do this is we need to go ahead and i mentioned before we need to install the expo cli right so this one right here so we've done this already we've all we've already um installed the cli the next thing that we need to do is actually go ahead and start using this now the first thing you need to do is actually go ahead and um create a device uh, basically you need to register your iphone as a device under the application service so that way you can actually go ahead and connect or push builds to your test device right now before we do that i just want to go ahead and see i think my expo device is working let's just double check something is my simulator oh, okay my simulator has finally come around let's just let that load i wanted to do this live right i was thinking about doing this on a recorded screen but then i think it's just when i do it live you guys can see for yourself the actual painful bits that kind of break when i'm actually live and i think that's so much more valuable than everything just being crystal perfect and you know all, every time is perfect because when we're developing the truth is it's not always perfect right so in this case there we go building javascript bundle nice okay there we go so you can see that on the simulator i started this by pressing i right so now <clears throat> what i'm going to change here is i'm going to make this a safe area view and then what that will do instead is it will go ahead and it will show it here okay now let's just double check something let's go into here and say class name equals padding of 10 and you can see that it's not pulling in the the babble's not kicking in right so the reason why this can happen is for it can happen in a few different reasons what i would say is at this point i would highly recommend you need to restart i believe it's your vs code or your server there was a reason i'm gonna find it on the stream uh, it was a little bit of a painful reason i remember where was it took a couple of retries and then i was able to do it so i did set up my bubble config i did do this i did do this okay let's do i open on ios The scary thing about doing a react native build on live is that there's so many ch more chances of bugs happening okay so that's fine now there was a uh, a place where i could extend my um where is it there we are that's it so the reason why we're not seeing class name right now is because we have to add in something called a type definition file so i forgot where it is where is it here it's not showing it here but basically what you need to do to basically stop it freaking out like this is go ahead and add in a new file called app.d.ts okay and in here you basically want to add in the reference to the types okay so here reference to the types native wind types okay and then we're going to close this and eventually at some point this is going to kick in and it will work right let's refresh again let's see if it's gonna if it's gonna do me a favor now no is it not still not working let's do text red 500 text red 500 um and at some point it will wake up right unless i've completely missed a step which i don't think i have typescript let's see i've already done this step right so we've already done that 
expo. We've already done this. We've already added in my uh, de uh, dependencies. Let's have a look again. Package JSON. Um, we did add in native wind. We did add in Tailwind CSS. Good. And then we did run our Tailwind CSS init file find app custom directory. Let's just double check our custom directory again. So let's go to Tailwind config and right here. So uh, app.tsx. So I'm just going to double check my config because I sometimes feel like I always mess up a little bit here. Oh, that's still fine. Okay, that's completely fine. And Babel config. Let's just go ahead and double check that one more time. In this case. Yep, that's completely fine. MPX expo slot clear. Okay, we could do that actually. Yeah. So I'm going to clear my cache, right? So what I'm going to do is detected the change in Babel config. There we go. That's the one I was waiting for. All right, so that's usually the problem here. So if we do export dash dash start, and I believe that is a correct thing, clear. And that will clear the cache. All right. So now we've run the project again with the clear flag. And now it says bundle the cache is empty, rebuilding. And then we re uh, do I to open it on iOS. Okay. And then wait for a sec and hit R. So okay, let's just wait until it actually loads. Let's close it here, push it up. Uh, I, there we go. And now, wait a second, that will pop up. Honestly, React Native is, requires so much patience. I'm just going to be real with you. It does require patience, but that's why I'm here. You can code along with me, okay? So in this case, there we go. Now it's building a bit again. Let's do a re... And, and, and if you do find that, I highly recommend you have to clear your bundle, yeah? It's mostly the, the case. Even when we do the EAS deployment step, chances are you're gonna have to rebuild a couple of times to get it to kick in the way you expect it to, the way it to work, All right? Okay, so what I'd recommend here is honestly, I did it last time and it just seemed to work, um, is I'm gonna go ahead and actually reopen this project. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy this. I'm gonna close my code terminal. I'm gonna open up a terminal here. I'm gonna do documents forward slash build. Oops, uh, builds. There we go. I'm going to CD into my directory again. I'm going to do code dot again. So I'm going to restart my VS code basically with the directory. And last time that, you know, that actually seemed to wake you up. There we go. So now I shouldn't complain about my class names. All right. I told you. I told you. All right. Hopefully it doesn't scream at me. If it does, then I, I made a mistake there. Okay, then we're gonna do expo, um, MPX expo start. And remember, if you're watching this on live, just know that afterwards, we always add timestamps to these videos so you can feel free to watch it with me and experience the entire flow, or you can go ahead and skip ahead. I'm gonna hit I to open up on iOS again. I'm gonna close this one again, so let's do that. And then hit I, there we go. Cool. Now, what I found most of the time is it's usually a caching issue here, right? Uh, Code with Guillaume says, Papa Fam is back. So cool to see you again. Sunny, hope you're doing well. I am doing well. Thank you so much, dude. Right? Um, someone said, how did I get this little color picker box? It's because I have the uh, Tailwind extension installed, dude. So that's the reason why. So in this case, Tailwind CSS IntelliSense, that is why we get that. So we fixed the first issue, but our Tailwind isn't kicking in. So we'll fix it on the stream live. Don't worry, we always do. Um, okay, so in this case, API cache, that's fine. All right, well, I mean, we'll, we'll come back to it. I guess we'll get we'll get around to it. Let's do a view. Oh, maybe it's because I'm in a safe view. No, I don't think it is. Let me just pop this here. Let me try and do it with a normal view and see. You, is that going to be red? Let's see. Where's my red text at? BG. Oh, okay. BG. Oh, wait. BG. Oh, wait a second. Oh, there we go. There we go. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> All right. So in that case, I believe I'm actually being so stupid here. I think I actually can't add safe area view. Oh, I can't add it. Safe area view. Okay. I mean, you see what I mean? Sometimes it's just so weird. React Native. Right. So if you've experienced the same thing, don't stress. It happens. Right. You see how what I would recommend is just change a component and it will force it to kick out at some point. Right. But there we go. Now we can start adding in our tailwind. Right. So I know a lot of you always drop comments about, you know, suddenly it worked and then it doesn't work and what the hell is going on. Um, and also you'll notice that we can't do the text white in the parent component here. 
right? You're gonna have to do actually on the text field here. So in this case, I have to do text white and then you can see it applies on the text. But that's damn good, right? We made it. So smash the thumbs up button. We're about to cross 300 likes. That's what I'm talking about, right? And then uh, now we can start making progress. Oh, that, that, that was kind of scary. I ain't gonna lie, right? <laughs> um, yeah, so it wasn't accepting the class name for some reason. And then I had to force it by changing it to view and then coming back to safe area view. So we're past the first problem. Nice. Now we've got a hundred more. I'm joking. All right. So now at this point, what you need to do is install. I've actually got a nicer bit of documentation here that I want to show you instead. Now we're going to go ahead and I'm going to show you the docs for how we can get set up with, uh, here we are create your first app. So on Expo, no, sorry, here is, oh yeah, it was this one, yeah, so there you go. So when we basically set up React Native purchases, right, we are, you're gonna be using Tail um, Revenue Cat, and our Revenue Cat is actually on the Expo doc. So if you're wondering, is it official? Should I use it? Expo themselves are recommending Revenue Cat. If you look on their docs on in-app purchases and in-app subscriptions, you will see that they also have a link to it, right? Now, in order to get everything set up, is actually, all we need to do is install the two things here. So one being React Native Purchases and one being Expo Dev Client, okay? So the first one that I'm gonna install, install is this one here, Expo Dev, and that, this has to be in your directory, okay? So I'm gonna go into Command J, I'm gonna pop open a second terminal, and I'm gonna push this one all the way to the side because that's just running my stuff over there, and I'm gonna go ahead and pop it in, Expo Install Expo Dev Client. And then you can see that this is, oh, so if you do want to avoid this issue, you can use MPX Expo install, right? So that way it will use the latest version. I recommend you actually do that to be fair. And then I'm going to do the same here with React Native Purchases, okay? So in this case, MPX Expo install React Native Purchases. And now it's basically installing the dependencies, but it's going to use Expo to in order to do it. And what this actually does behind the scenes is it installs the appropriate pods and stuff for iOS, it installs all the goodness in Android and the manifest and all that kind of stuff. But it does it in a nice way. You just write Expo install and it does all the dependency management for you. That's the beauty of Expo, right? So in this case, we've installed the two things that we needed. Step two is to configure our revenue products and offerings, right? So at this point, we can kind of pause here, right? And then the reason being is I, this is where I can kind of take over and show you how I would do it, right? But what we're going to do here is we're going to pause here and we're actually going to build out a little bit of the UI, right? Because I mean, we just want to see some stuff on the screen, right? So I'm going to build out the UI while we have access to the simulator. And then what I'm going to do is we're gonna go from the UI connected to the app store and then we're gonna go ahead and hook everything up with the revenue cap, okay? So that's first things first is let's get to the point where our app turns from this to this, right? Which is obviously a lot better looking than what I have right now on the screen. So heading over to our app, this has several screens on it, right? If I showed you, as I showed you earlier, if I type on, uh, hit on track workout, for example, it says, hooray, you have access to this feature and so forth, right? We, this is called a React Native Navigation. Well, most of the time, the, the library you're gonna use for this is called React Native Navigation. So what I'd highly recommend at this point is we actually install that. So first thing that we need to do is, I'm gonna leave that over here is our starting point here is app.tsx, right? TSX TypeScript file. Well, so we wanna convert this into screens and then we're gonna have a navigation kind of structure to this, right? So how do we do that? Well, basically we go over to our, rather we type in React Native Navigation and I will show you, this is the library that you should get very familiar with when you're doing React Native work, okay? So this is how you navigate between screens. It's one of the most popular ways of doing it. So in this case, click on read docs, you'll see for yourself. And the reason why I'm showing you this exact route as well is because the docs will tend to change, right? They will tend to change. So you should actually check for yourself. And I get the comment all the time, what about the latest version? You're gonna always have this issue, right? Where it's gonna go ahead and sometimes be delayed and or, or outdated and stuff. So you have to check for yourself. So we're gonna install React Native Navigation into our app. So I'm gonna install it like so, React native navigation. And then I'm gonna come down here and it says installing dependencies into an Expo managed project. That's exactly what I'm doing. So I'm gonna copy this entire line right here. Okay, and you can see we are installing React Native screens and React Native safe area context. So I'm gonna install those into our thing, into our app. And you can see that's using MPX Expo install. And then you can see we can stop there, right? Because what we've done is we're not using a bare React Native project. Now we're using Expo Manage Project instead, right? So the next step now is that we need to basically go ahead and wrap our app into a navigation container. So in this case now, what I can do is I can import navigation container like so. And then what I'm gonna do is basically wrap 
my entire app in the navigation container, right? Just like that. Okay. And at this point you should see, you know, nothing's broken, nothing's crying at me, freaking out. Uh, and then you can even hit R on the keyboard on the, in the console and it will refresh, right? So good, good so far. Next step that we need to do is go ahead and you can click on Hello React Navigation, see an example of this, is you need to install your native stacks, right? So in this case, I'm gonna copy Yarn Add React Navigation and Native Stack, copy that, head over here. Oops, let me chop that on the side. And then we're gonna go ahead and pop it in here. So Yarn Add React Navigation Native Stack. And this is going to be like responsible for the different, like the stack library, I guess. So it's basically how we stack screens on top of each other and how we navigate between them. So now what we need to do is create something called a stack navigator. And a stack navigator allows us to essentially have like a screen like this and we can have a link to another screen. And it will essentially have that behavior where we can go into the next screen and then swipe back between to the, to, to the old screen, right? Or if we had a modal, we can basically set the type to modal, click it and it pops up as a modal, that screen. Right, so we need this, uh, it's, it's basically a, a crucial element, right? Guys, we're about to cross 300 likes. Smash that like button, let's get the energy up. That's so sick, right? So I'm gonna grab this stack, uh, con stack over here, and we're gonna basically pop that in just over here, right? Cool. And you can actually leave that outside over there. Right. And then what I'll show you is a little trick. So go to the end of Navigator, Control Spacebar, and you have Auto Complete. Click it, bam, you get your Auto Complete. Right. I always get that question. Everyone's asking me, how the hell do you do that? That's how you do it. Right. Then we're going to go ahead and copy this stack over here. So that bit of code there. And basically, we're just going to remove this right now. I'm going to paste that in and you can see we're going to push eventually to a home screen. And then the whole point here is that you can have several screens. I can have the home screen. I could have the search screen. I could have the inbox screen and you know, different screens like that. That's how you basically nest your different screens. And then that way we can basically, we're telling our, our you know, our React Native app that um, these are the different screens. And then basically it sets up all the navigation parameters so that we can basically go ahead and navigate between them. Okay. Uh, candles though, will you marry me? I'm <laughs> jokes. All right. Um, so in this case, we've got the home screen, right? Um, and then what I'm going to do is I need to create that home screen component. So firstly, before I do that, I want everyone to go into your extensions and download this extension because it is absolutely game changer. I'll say it every single session, ES7, React, Redux, React Native Snippets. So good. Such a good extension, right? So simple. It's just snippets that allow us to write functional components really easy. So download that. Just click install and it'll do it. And then what I want you to do is go into your folder structure at the app.tsx level, create a folder, call it screens, simple as. And then inside of screens, all I want you to do is create something called a home screen.tsx, okay? React native functional component with an export. And I went up and use style sheets, but in this case, you see my snippet, I just hit enter now and bam, wow, I have a home screen, right? I can get rid of this. That's fine, we don't need it. And I can say, I am the home screen. Bam, hit save. Go back to my app.tsx, control space bar, enter, and then bam, just like that now, I have a home screen. And what you should see if you did everything correct is you need to go ahead and see the screen, right? If you don't get this screen, you probably messed something up. And at this point, you should go back and just quit. I'm joking, I'm joking, do not quit. You should go back and actually debug it and figure out what's going on. And then if you do get stuck, honestly, you have ChatGPT to help you out. And I have ChatGPT videos to help out, uh, to coming along the line. Or join a community like Zero to Full Stack Hero and ask for help. That's the main thing, right? So in this case, we've got the home screen right here. And what we're then gonna do, and by the way, all this code will be available on the GitHub repo afterwards. If you want it, check it out, links in the description, right? Um, so we're gonna have the home screen and you can see it just renders out the home screen like here, right? And again, this applies with all of our stuff. We can add padding to the, the element afterwards, all that good stuff, text, extra large. You see, we can, we can do all of our normal stuff, right? That we expect. So at this point now, We've got our screen. How does your face cam zoom in and out? I have something called a stream deck. That's how I do it, right? And what I basically want is, remember, we captured our UI pictures before and none of these have this ugly looking header, right? I don't want that header. So how can I change it? Well, you, you can change the default options, but I actually want to go ahead and change just this screen option. And I'm going to add an argument here called options. 
and inside of here i'm gonna add an object and then i'm gonna say header shown is false see it's like the github copilot is listening to me right so i'm gonna do this and as soon as i hit save what you'll find is the header disappears now it's very important to understand that the view here is like if i was to get rid of this padding look what happens you see how it goes all the way into that dangerous area right so what we want to do with our screens is tend to use something called the safe area view and you're going to have two once you've installed the react native dependencies try to use the react native one it's just a safe use right so go ahead pop that in we can get rid of the old dependency and what this will do is it will only use the safe area now the safe area is basically outside the notch so that way you're not cutting off any text or any of that stuff so to avoid all that and it will account for all different types of phones and all that kind of stuff right um so yeah, but what, before we jump on, I'm gonna have a quick water break, right? So it's been a good, uh, oh wow, time's going, time's going well, but um, make sure, oh, 300 likes as well, sick. <laughs> Let me go, go, get, the, get the energy out, guys. Right, let's keep going. I love this song. Right, so we're gonna go back to our home screen. And now, we are gonna go ahead and build out this what you're seeing right here right so first things first let's have um our <clears throat> let's have a uh okay this is actually document it right so i'm gonna actually go ahead and add a few um comments so the first comment i'm gonna say is it's gonna be i want to kind of visualize this for you guys i'm gonna pop this over here the first comment is gonna be this image right so i want to have a well i want to yeah i want to have an image right so i want to have an image it's going to be the logo and then i want to have um this area right here now really what this is is these are just components rendered out one after another so these are just being rendered out one after another right so one after another and then this one is just actually surrounded in a view and i'm simply using a flex rule to basically divide the space Right, so if you actually set up your components correctly, then it will actually, you know, you can do this very easily, right? So I'm going to call these action rows, right? So each one is an action row, action, 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 action row, right? So we're going to create a bunch of action rows. So this is going to be basically be action row components. Okay. And then we're going to have a little icon up here, right? So this icon is going to be responsible and it's basically going to show pro or upgrade button. Right? And it's going to show us the status of our membership or if we're a pro or any of that kind of stuff. Okay. So in this case, let's go ahead and hit save. Thank you, Comic Clips. He goes, well done, Sonny. Thanks for your vids. I appreciate you, man. Thank you, Heath them as well. And thank you, Swaraj. Honestly, I love and appreciate all of your messages. I see you guys, all right? So at this point now, we can go back to our app. And we can start doing this so i think the first thing that we should do is get that image in right that image is probably the one that's going to be visible straight away so let's do image let's import the image from react native it's a self-closed component now the first thing i want to do is actually pass in a source now i've actually given it a source already or i've got a source available and the way we do it is we say source we pass in an object and we pass in a uri okay and i've actually got a uri already available and this uri you can feel free to use it it's uh, it's this one right here right um i'm not responsible for your use just throwing that out there that's up to you right uh Erfan says we need to make something a hundred times bigger he deserves to be a superstar dude then that's all i ask is smash the thumbs up man because i i love that comment we're almost at two hundred thousand subscribers which is incredible right that's actually amazing like uh let's go ahead and uh keep the likes coming let's hit 400 now right and we're gonna get the energy up as well all right so class name we're gonna go ahead and oops class name I'm going to say equals and i'm going to say that this one is width full and height of 64. and if you're wondering what the heck is this stuff this is called tailwind so if i hover over it you'll see that this is actually going to create css for me that's actually going to look like the following right and a lot of you are asking for video calling apps i will make one in the future okay hit save and now let's see what we get okay oh nice right we get that so we can get rid of the text up above cool nice jay's in the house what is up there we go. Jay, are you, uh, are you, are you good? Cool. Nice. All right. So at this point now, um, we're going to go ahead and create the, I guess we should maybe create the, the start creating the, I guess the pro button. Let's do the pro button. Okay. 
So uh, nice. Jay's back in the house. That is what I'm talking about. All right. So now next step is this. Let's do that pro bit. All right. So uh, I'm going to have a touchable opacity, right? So whenever you want a button to be clickable, but it's not a button, it's kind of you want to customize the view of it, then I'd recommend you use something called touchable opacity, right? So touchable opacity like so. And then you can go ahead and import this from React Native. And what we're going to do inside of here is we're going to have a bit of text which says pro or upgrade, right? So in this case, it's going to be like this. So pro or upgrade. And now if you see, if I click it, oh, you see how I get this nice clickable? That's because it's touchable. So like I can touch it and it changes opacity when I touch it, right? So uh, if you can't see that, just zoom in. <laughs> I'll look closely because I can't zoom into the front, right? Uh, and then I, I need an icon now, right? So I need this icon that you see right here. So this one right here. So at this point, I know, right? 300 likes, sick. Uh, so at this point, we're almost going to 400. The likes are flying, right? So at this point, we're going to change uh, Ionic. We're, we're going to add in icons. So what you may not realize is when you actually use Expo, we have the following, right? So when you use Expo, we have Expo vector icons as part of the package. So in this case, you actually get this just by installing um, Expo. So I'm going to show you. If you go to icons in the Expo documentation, it will show you how to use it. So that's the first thing, how to use it, as well as how to go ahead. And firstly, how to use it, and then as well as how to search all of the different icons, right? So in this case, you can see here we can actually search. If I typed in person, for example, but loads of different people come up, right? Or the people icons, okay? Now, um, this, uh, well, I, I, the, there's so much positivity in the chat, but I can't reply to everyone, but I, I see you guys, right? So this is, this is awesome. So um, at this point, yeah, this is how I'm checking for them. And then if you click it, it will show you how to use it. So let's do this for the first one. And then I'll basically just assume that you do this approach when you're doing it yourself. So in this case, person, we have an icon right here. And I actually want to use person circle. So we're going to copy this from here, right? So in this case, I'm going to copy it over to my code paste it in and then what i'm going to do is render it okay so i'm going to copy that and i'm going to pop it in like so and i'm going to show my simulator and hit okay and now you can see it popped up nice okay and uh, what we're going to do is style this out a bit so we're going to say class name and then here's going to say this is actually going to be an absolutely positioned element and the reason being is because i want to throw it over here on the right right and it, it doesn't matter how much i scroll around this screen i don't want to show so basically if i show you this app right this is the live one you see no matter what i do or if i go up and down it's going to always be stuck in that top right and that's what i want here okay so i'm going to say absolute and this is going to be a z50 because i never want it to be buried behind something z means the layer that you're positioning it in top is going to be five and the right is going to be ten right oh that's amazing somebody just received an internship as a software developer uh, thanks to our videos love from india that's amazing well done dude All right so we're going to uh, hit save and now you can see it flies over to the top right right then we're going to say items in the center okay and as you can see now it's kind of nicely pushed into that center right now for the safe area view we're just going to style this a little bit we're going to say flex one give it as much space as we can possibly we're going to say the background is going to be gray 100 and then we're going to give it a relative color okay and then i'm going to also just go ahead and hit go to my console and hit r to refresh because for some reason the background color is not kicking in let's do red Okay, so red. Oh, it was. Okay, so it is kicking. I guess it's just super subtle. All right, so gray relative. There we go. All right. So in this case, that's pretty nice. Uh, I'm going to go all of this. I want it to be in a scrollable view, right? So I want to add a scroll view. And the scroll view is basically like a view, but it's just scrollable. So in this case, if I throw it here, now you can see I can scroll. Right, so that's better. And it also has a little bit of padding at the top, which I like. Right, so we've got a tiny bit of that. Now we've got this scrollable feature, which I didn't have before. Okay. Um, awesome stuff. Right. 350 likes incoming. Come on, keep pushing. Right. And if you're watching the replay, you know what to do. Just destroy the like button. Okay. So in this case, we've got pro or upgrade. And I'm going to make this basically change based on if you're actually a pro or if you're not. Right. Uh, as in a pro member right you're all pros in my eyes right so in this case ionic uh, uh for the ionic icons we're going to change the size to 30 and the color i've got a nice hexadecimal color here so i'm going to go ahead and copy that right now the copy and then change the color to this and then yeah hit save there we go and i want the same color in the uh, text so in this case i'm going to say class name and this is going to be text 
centrally aligned and i'm also going to say text and in remember in the tailwind we have something called uh in we have the just in time compiler and the just in time compiler allows us to have dynamic values in square brackets we can still have that here but we can pass it in like so and you can see we can still actually pass in our own colors so it's really really cool to actually go ahead and see that right Faisal says, hi, bro, I'm at work. I want to drop in and say you are awesome. You're awesome, dude, for tuning in. Uh, make sure you don't get caught at work. <laughs> but thank you so much for tuning in. Right, we're going to change it to just say upgrade. And then, yeah, so that, that's looking pretty good so far. Now for the action row, right? Let's actually get something pretty nicely looking like this, right? So action row, that's what we want to do. And the action row should take a few different things in uh, as arguments, right? So as props. So we're going to make it a customizable element and each time we pass in different props it will render out these different icons and different colors so i'm going to show you how to do that so first things first go to app.tsx level create a new folder called components right yeah no one pressed the like button twice <laughs> otherwise yeah you know what's gonna happen right, so at this point we're gonna do that and then we're gonna create a component inside the components folder called action row.tsx right and then react native functional exported component bam we can get rid of the react at the top no longer needed all right and that's good and then what we're going to do is we're going to basically mask out our props and how we're going to pull them into this app so if i go back to app uh home screen sorry here for example let's do a dummy call for an action row okay so one of the action rows is to track a workout right so in this case you can see it's to track a workout so in order to do that i'm going to have something that looks like this so we're going to import it and you can see right now it's complaining because we haven't set up typescript in the way that it expects so it thinks that you know everything ain't really set up right right joseph isaac oh what's up man good to see he's tuning in from work as well so these are the different props that we're gonna basically customize our custom component with right so by passing in different props or properties we can actually customize how a component will be rendered out on the screen right so in this case we've got different colors different screens and we're going to also say vertical okay um and um yeah we'll cover that in this oh yeah I, I i know why we're doing that okay so we need to actually support this so first things first is the props come through here now all of those individual props that you just saw i have to basically i'm going to do something called destructuring and i do teach this inside the course so remember check out zero to four stack hero if you want to learn more about your javascript fundamentals yeah or just learn them on the videos it's all up to you so in this case the props are getting destructured here but this is not where it ends right you have to define the prop types here and this is where the typescript is basically going to help us protect against unwanted bugs or anything like that so we actually have to say that we have to basically tell it the shape of the props that it expects so in this case we've got the title right which is going to be a string so the title is going to be a string then we've got the screen which is going to be of type any and the reason that because is uh any right now just for now right is because um uh, what's it called? What's that in the last stream? Was that time? Oh yeah, this is so good to see. I'm going to ignore, but I, I see you, right? So when the screen is uh, any, that's because we haven't got the correct type definition just yet. That's because we're going to navigate to a certain screen. Then we're going to have color, and this is going to be for a string, right? Then we're going to have three more, and these are going to be all optional, which means you don't have to pass them in. So requires pro, icon, and vertical, okay? Now, the reason why I want to do this is because basically some of these, so if we look at this screenshot, some of these will require pro. And if they require pro, I'm going to make it so that you can't actually navigate to that screen. And if you try to navigate when you haven't got a pro membership, it's going to pop up that, you know, that pop up that I showed you previously, right? The one that says, whoa, you need to pay. So it's going to pop this up saying you need to upgrade your membership, okay? So we're going to go ahead and do that right now. So we've got our props correctly placed in like so. The next thing that we're gonna wanna do is create, we're gonna change our view to a touchable opacity, right? And I don't know why it doesn't actually work completely properly like that, right? Uh, so now we've got a touchable opacity and then inside of it, we're gonna have an icon and a title, right? So let's just keep it very simple for now, an icon and a title, okay? So icon and title. So we've got the text already in there so let's just leave that for now and then we're eventually going to have a ionic on icon so i'm going to import that at the top like so bam and then you can see what we're doing here is typically in the previous use case we were actually passing in the name of the icon that we wanted to use right 
But here what we're doing is we're using the string that we passed in um, or the component that we essentially pass in, depends, in this case it will actually be a string value, right? Uh, in this case, it's going to be a string value, but oh, that's why I did it, yeah, because this is expecting a certain string, and I don't want to write all of these out because they didn't give me a, a specified type definition. So in this case, what we can do is we're going to say name is equal to icon, um, and that's going to be basically whatever we pass in as a prop type, right? And then the title here, I'm going to instead replace with title. So we do curly brackets for JSX to basically pass our prop in like so. Okay, now let's go ahead and see. You can see track workout with a heart has popped up, right? And the color is white, right? Now, in this case, I want to make the background a different color, right? So in this case, the background should be a different color. So what I can do here is I can actually go ahead and pass in. Now, you can pass in colors in many ways, but in this case, when you're passing a dynamic value into a customizable component, it's better to pass in the style prop, the color, right? So in this case, the color is like so, right? So color, color, uh, and it's actually gonna, not gonna be color. It's gonna be, um, I think it's background color. Yeah, background color is gonna be the color here, okay? And what you'll find now is that that is the track workout. So we're almost getting there, right? It's so a track workout. And what I'm now gonna do is pop in the rest of them so the rest of the action rows, so that way we can get a, basically a nice overview as we build this out, All right? So going into my home screen, I've got the browse workouts. I'm gonna add in and hit save. And now you can see browse workouts popped in and I've got a bunch of others which I've actually done for us, right? And some of them are gonna require pro. So you see the last three are requiring pro, right? And I'm passing in different icons into each one and I'm passing in different colors and different and all of the screens in this case are eventually going to navigate to a demo screen right so remember this is a demo and it's just showing you how to basically block access to different screens based on if you're a pro member or not 350 likes that's what i'm talking about let's get to 400 let's keep going guys all right so action row is going pretty well so far and now what we're going to do is we're going to customize the text because it looks boring as hell so for the class name, we're going to say text white. We're going to say the font should be bold. Font should be bold and the text should be large. There we go. Bam. All right. Now for the touchable opacity for the class name, we are going to actually do quite a bit here. So we're going to say firstly, it's a flex box. And the reason being is by default on React Native, everything is flex column. Now, when you're taught, you know, Flexbox, if you've done Flexbox for you, check out my video, it'll teach you Flexbox. But by default, everything is a row. In React Native, because it's mostly on, well, it's mainly for phones, everything by default is in column. So you have to tell it that you're actually going in the other direction, right? So in this case, if we were to say like uh, in this, that we said flex row, you'll see the following. So then it goes into a row, okay? But we're actually gonna keep it as that just for now, and I'll show you why, right? We're gonna say flex one, so I want them to use up uh, as much space as they possibly can. We're gonna say justify in the center. Uh, we're gonna say item center with a padding of five. And in fact, I'm gonna change this to padding Y of six. I want the padding on the Y axis of six, there we go. And remember, it's a scrollable component, so that's pretty nice. Okay, uh, I'm gonna give it a slight shadow. And uh, actually, to be fair, you won't see a shadow because we're on mobile. So shadows, we're not gonna do. You, if, if you wanna add a shadow, I recommend adding it in style uh, as a custom shadow, right? We're gonna round the corners as rounded LG. So you see it's slightly rounded corners now. And then we're gonna say space between all of the X components as two, right? And you can also do, um, so this is actually when they're in a vertical sense, right? So if I did flex row, then it would kick in. You see space X, oops, space X of, like, let's say if I did eight, for example, you see how they spaced out. So I'm doing space X of two, but for flex row, I'll show you why I keep getting rid of it. I'm gonna change this to back ticks and put a curly brace and same with this. And the reason for this is because I wanna do some string interpolation here, right? My um, music just went on a weird madness and cut off. I don't know if that's me or if it's, Okay, one second. I don't know if that's... Can you guys hear me? I think you can. Yeah, or not? Let me see. One second. Oh, God, something weird's happened. All right, one second. <laughs> All right, I, I can't actually see my music or hear my music, and I don't know why. 
And also my preview is looking a bit weird, right? So, okay, we are live. Just give me one second. I'm just trying to figure out on my end why I can't hear my own music. Um, Jay was like, music is banging. And then the music literally happened to stop. So I'm going to see if that... Okay, there we go. Super weird. I don't know what happened. Okay, we're back. All right. <laughs> so, so in this case, um, so strange, right? So we got, we got back ticks. And then we're going to go ahead and basically add in... A, J, it's so funny because at the minute I saw J Rock, the music is banging. It just cut off. I don't know what happened. <laughs> um, so in this case, now uh, I'm going to go ahead and say um, dollar sign curly brackets. So basically, what I'm doing here is string interpolation, right? So what this means is basically, if I want, if I have a dynamic variable, then I want to show, I want to basically determine what style is going to get applied if that variable exists. So in this case, I'm going to say if it's a vertical screen. Then I'm going to say it's flex column. Otherwise, I'm going to say flex row, right? So in this case, you see they're all vertical, right? Um, and they're all vertical. Um, and that's strange because I, do I have them all vertical? I think in my home screen, did I pass everything vertical? Okay, let's have a look. So I don't pass in these ones vertical. Interesting, All right? So in this case, flex column. I think I have to say, Flex column, yeah, that's fine. Flex row, okay, interesting. Um, I'll fix it. Refresh. Huh. Okay, and then I'm gonna basically say the following. I'm gonna say if another one here. I'm gonna say if it's um. Okay, we're gonna do the locked status after we've actually connected the backend properly. Right. So my vertical is being a bit strange here. So I'm actually going to go ahead and say that vertical. Oh, that's why. Okay. I had this little curly bracket here. Yeah. So that's a uh, super annoying. Right. So you see, you got to be careful with that guys. Right. So that's what was happening. So, um, yeah. So we've got the verticals working them out and the, and the horizontal. Nice. And then the final touch here is that in the home screen, I'm going to go to the two action rows here and I want this to basically go ahead and say <laughs> J is a Sigma. <laughs> so say J is a Sigma. <laughs> so in this case, um, I'm going to go ahead and put in a view. I'm going to pop in the action rows down here. And then this one, I'm basically going to make this a, come on, I'm going to basically pop this right native. Let's go ahead and do this. And now what we're, we're going to do is basically make this its own flex row box, right? So now you can see now I've only got those two in a flex row box. And this is where flex box is beautiful if you learn how to do it correctly, okay? So now I'm going to say justify the space between them and give a space between the two uh, children of two, right? Now the uh, reason why this isn't looking the way I want it is I also want to give everything around here of MX of two. So the action row, all of the action rows should be surrounded in a view. So everything up until the end of the action row should be surrounded in a view. And that action row should have a MX of five. So I want to, I don't want to touch the side, right? So, so far, I mean, it's almost there. Something's really annoying me though, right? And I think that's just simply because I haven't added a margin around these, which I guarantee it is. And I think it is, yep, it's true. It's because I haven't added a margin there, which made total sense. There you go, bam. And just like that, we have our UI looking banging, right? And if I tap it, touchable opacities, that's pretty cool, guys. Smash the thumbs up button, hit 400 likes if you're liking this right now. And we're about to touch on to the point where I can basically navigate to the next screen. So a little water break. Let's go. <clears throat> you know what's crazy? is that I, I saw the stats recently and so many of you are watching and not subscribed. Why? Just subscribe and then you'll get the notifications. Like, come on, subscribe. <laughs> um, space wide, yeah, space wide does work by the way. Yeah, you can use space wide, but margin two actually was perfect for the way I wanted it. But you can use that, yeah? Um, there's not a better, it just depends on the use case, right? Preference, right? There's not a better one to use. So in this case, the screen, uh, we haven't decided to use yet. Okay, this is it. So let's go ahead and create our second screen, right? So I'm getting confused with all these designs, right? So now I want it. So when I click this, it takes me to this screen, a demo screen, right? 
Um, so how do we add a second screen? Well, it's fairly straightforward. We go into our stack navigator. We copy the stack screen. We paste it. We basically pull this one, the demo screen. And basically what you will do is behind each of the different screens, right? So behind each of these different ones, you'd have a workout screen. You'd have a browse screen. You'll have a connect screen. You'll have an add exercise screen and you have different stack screens appropriate for each one, okay? In this case, I'm categorizing all of them into the demo screen, all right? So very important point that I just shared. And then I'm gonna basically change this to the demo screen, which doesn't exist yet. So I'm gonna go ahead and actually do this right now. And I'm gonna go back to my song that I'm, I'm loving this, this song right now, all right? This is, this is such a vibe when you're coding, honestly. I, I was building this and this song came out. I was like, I have to add it to the pop fan, right? Yes, the video is delayed with my sound, I think, but don't worry about it. So demo screen .tsx, our React Native functional export, bam. And then we're gonna go ahead and get rid of this because that annoys me. And then over here, we're gonna go ahead and import it like so. And now what we wanna do is when I click this screen, I want it to navigate to me towards the next screen, right? So if I go to demo screen, and I'm not joking, everyone always asks me, is this actually a newsletter? That, is this actually a playlist that you use? And it is a playlist that I use. Um, I don't know why my music is doing this. It's really annoying me. Why the hell is that happening? Um, I think my, something about my Bluetooth or something. Let me tr I'm going to restart it because uh, my later. Okay. It's asked me to update. Not now. <laughs> this. Okay, there we go. We're back. <laughs> cool. All right. So you got the view. Uh, and then what I want to do is I want to navigate to that screen. So I'm going to go into the home screen. And remember, I was passing in a screen here, right? So what I can do is for the demo screen, right now, just the demo screen. That's fine. So I'm actually going to go into my app.tsa. I just want to show you something. If I remove the header hidden here for that one, and I go back to my um, action row, Right, so these buttons basically. Now what I wanna do is when I click on it, I wanna navigate me somewhere. Now the way that we do this is we need the navigation object, right? We need access to the navigation object. Now this actually really handy is that we can actually pull that using a special hook. So we can say const navigation equals use navigation. Right now, because we're using TypeScript, we actually need to go ahead and actually enhance this a little bit by passing in a certain type of prop. Otherwise, it doesn't know what screen you're actually pushing to. So what we need to do now is basically pause, go back to app.tsx, and we need to basically start passing in our correct prop types, right? So over here, we, this is where we basically need to go ahead and pass in the type definitions for our different screens. So we're gonna create something called the root stack parameter list, right? It sounds horrible, I know, you can name it whatever the hell you want. But basically, this is a type that we're gonna export, right? And then we're gonna pass in all the different screens here alongside with all of the variables that those screens can get passed along with. In this case, we've got three screens, demo screen, home screen, and the paywall screen. And um, yeah, so in this case, we're gonna go ahead and take that in. And we're gonna go pop this in here like so, right? So uh, we've got the home screen, paywall, demo, and then none of them are accepting any different variables. That's fine, right? Um, so let's go ahead and save. And now if I go back to my demo screen, remember this bit, yeah? Remember that. So in this case, now what I'm going to do is on the demo screen, I'm going to create something. And this bit can be kind of nasty to understand in the beginning, but I promise you it will make sense. We're going to have a, pr a type definition above. And this one is going to look like this. It's going to have a native stack navigation prop. We're going to import the previous root stack param list. And then we're going to say what screen this uh, page is actually on. So sorry, I'm in the wrong screen right now. Um, no, no, this is fine. I'm going to, no, am I on the correct screen? Oh, one second. Okay, so this is going to be on the home screen. So this is going to be on the home screen, yeah. So in this case, action rows are on the home screen, so that's fine. So navigation prop is basically going to get all of the screens, and then we're going to say which screen we're on. And then we get this navigation prop, and we pass it into our navigation prop over here, okay? So now we have this navigation, nice navigation object, right? Jose Felix is looking good so far, awesome stuff. UK Kazdao says, thanks for your publications. I'm now a front-end developer, and I work for a company in Turkey. Sick. I'm writing a, rewriting a career opportunity site with 3 million members in Re with React. That is so cool, man. And uh, there, well done. Congrats. And Jay screenshot that. That is amazing. 
right? So in this case, what we're going to do is we're going to say on press, right? And that, uh, GitHub Copilot beat me to it. We're going to say on press, nice screenshot, right? So now we're going to say on press. I don't know why that is doing that. That is so frustrating, but it's like, as in it keeps pausing my music and I have no idea why it's doing it. Um, okay. Anyway, I'm going to come back to that in a second. Oh, yeah, we go. Here we go. Right, so at this point, I'm going to say on press, and then I'm going to say uh, arrow function, navigation, dot, and then you can see we've got all these different options. So, so navigate is the one that I want. And I'm going to literally say navigate to the screen that we passed in, right? Now, the screen is going to be different for every different uh, thing. So in the home screen, you can see I passed in the demo, 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 demo. Those ones will work. The one with the paywall, uh, where was it? Um, oh, we haven't done that yet. Okay, that's fine. All right, so in this case, navigate to screen. So if I click it now, look what happens, guys. If I click track workout, oh, we get navigated to a screen. And what you'll see is I can actually swipe back from that screen. So the natural behavior there is there, or I can click back. And as I mentioned before, I don't like the UI for this. So I'm going to go back to my app.tsx and I'm going to disable the header here for that screen. Yeah, and you can do a default setting, but I'm just showing you per screen at the moment. So I'm going to do that. And now you can see it's in the danger zone, right? So we're going to fix that by saying safe area view. Safe area view. There we go. Boom. And then copy that. Bam. Safe area view. Now we're in the demo screen. Cool. So what I want to do now is basically quick little UI for the demo screen. And I'm going to basically have my navigation object at the top. So I'm going to import the necessary dependencies that we needed for that. Right. So well, I've just explained this before, but this is on the demo screen, which makes sense. Then we're going to have the navigation object that we're going to basically access. So we're going to pull in our useful hook. Now we have the navigation object. Cool. And then we've got the touchable opacity. Uh, but firstly, I want to basically translate this to this. Right. So this is going to be a touchable opacity button. And then we're going to do the following with the rest. Now, the first things first is I'm going to have a uh, at the top. Here, I'm going to have touchable opacity like so and then inside of here i'm gonna have a text oops text sorry text like so and in this text it's gonna say go back yeah and on that go back i'm gonna have an ionic on right and you can have different types of icons i just stuck with ionic icons to keep the ui consistent but whatever um, expo icons has you can use right so as you can see it's white Right? But that's because the background, I still want to change it to be a custom background color. And in this case, I'm going to take a custom background color of uh, this nice orange color. Right. So in this case, I'm going to basically make it my own custom color. And as you'll see, it doesn't stretch all the way down, which is kind of irritating. So in order for it to use all that room, you say flex one and then it will say, I'm going to use all the space I possibly can. Right. So Darshan, what's up, dude? Good to see you in the house. Right. Now look at this. Um, look at, so that's really nice so far. And then we've got the text here. Uh, that bit, I'm going to go ahead and change the text to say class name. And it's going to be text white. Right. And um, the final thing is for the touchable opacity. Oops. I'm going to say it should be flex row. Right. And I want to item like I want to centralize the item. So I am center. So look, look how that's horrible, right? If I do items center. Now it goes next to it, and I say padding of five, and we should have a little bit of breathing room. That's nice, right? Now if I click it, it doesn't do anything, right? But I want it to simulate the back button. So what I do is I go here, I type in on press. And then I have an arrow for, oh, actually what we can do here is because I'm not actually passing any property, property, I can pass a signature of a function and it will invoke it for me. So I can say navigation.go back, right? And that will do just what I want. So now I'll go back, boom, hey, look at that, right? Uh, Gigi Mark says, Papa fan for life, that's what I'm talking about. Yeah, look at this, oh, nice, right? So now we've got our screens looking pretty good. So the next natural step is to go ahead and pull in the view. So I'm going to go ahead and pop in. Uh, so for the next bit, I'm not going to spend too long on this area. The reason being is because it's just a UI bit, right? So I'm debating maybe just to even pull that what I did here to basically save us some time. But basically, 
I've just got a bunch of icons, a bunch of text, right? And this bit is not really that important. You can put whatever you want there. The whole point of this screen, and I'm gonna just pop this on the screen right now so you can see for yourself what I did. But basically, I just popped in the following, right? So I got rid of the demo screen and I popped in this. So you can pause the screen and really just, this is my example demo screen. But really what you would do is you would replace this demo screen or each of the screens that you would navigate to with the actual app functionality. This is purely for the demo part. So in this case, I'm just gonna go ahead and save. I'm gonna go back and now you can see we've got access like so, right? But in this case, we haven't set up our padding in the exact way that I would like. And that is because I have not put everything inside of a view correctly. I don't think I have actually. Oh no, that's actually fine. Yeah, that's actually fine. That is good. That is what I wanted. It's just a smaller phone, right? So in that case, hooray, you have access to this feature. This is where you can create a new screen, blah, 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 and do all the stuff that you need to do. Okay, so that's looking pretty nice so far. Yeah, so in this case, that's actually pretty damn sweet. So we've done that bit, we've done that bit. Now, I think we should move over to the paywall screen, right? So now I'm gonna implement the paywall screen and we're gonna go ahead and get everything hooked up the way we need it. So first things first, let's implement the paywall. And then what we're gonna do is actually make it a functional paywall. So that way you can actually see uh, if you're a pro member, we're gonna create a custom hook as well in today's video. So we've got loads going on today, right? So make sure you do smash that thumbs up button. We're almost at 400 likes. This stream is going so damn strong right now, right? So first step, we're gonna go into our screens. We're gonna create one more called paywall. Right, so this one's gonna be called paywall. And as you can see, how the hell did it know what I'm writing? Well, it knows it because of my type definitions at the top, which means it will stop me from writing a random gibberish screen. It'll say, whoa, 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 you can't do that because we don't have a screen called pay like that one, right? It's a paywall, there you go. Right, it also helps get up Copilot. And now I need to make a paywall screen, okay? So in this case, the paywall screen, I'm gonna go ahead and create a paywall. So in this case, I'm gonna go ahead and say paywall, uh, actually in lowercase w, paywall.tsx. There we go. React native functional export component, bam. Get rid of the React, bam. And go over here back to our app and import the paywall, paywall. Now, for a paywall, can you see how it comes up slightly different, right? This is like a modal. It's very different to what we're seeing at the moment, right? Um, so in this case, this modal, that's super annoying. I don't know why this Bluetooth connection is kind of cutting out. Um, let's, let me do it again. There we go. Okay. So um, we've got this, um, yeah, this paywall. And you can see it's actually a modal. So I want this to swipe up from the bottom when I click it. Right, uh, Gigi Mark says, Papa found changing the game, leveling up tutorial content, changing lives by the minutes. That's what I'm talking about. That gets me so hyped when I see stuff like that because that's what we are trying to do. That's the mission, right? So let's go to paywall. And what I want to do is remember, we actually have already hooked it up in such a way that if we click one of these down here, oh no, we actually haven't got anything directing to paywall yet, I guess, right? But if we were to go, for example, and connect this to a paywall button, let's do that, right? So in this case, I want this to connect to the paywall. So as our first step. So let's go to our um, app, our home screen, and let's go to the touch wall opacity and say, firstly, remember, we're at the home screen now, so we're gonna need access to the navigation uh, objects, which means that we're gonna have to do our neat little navigation prop. Let's pop that in over at the top so far. So over outside, like so, boom import it like so root stack param list bam and we're also in the home screen right now hence why i'm doing this but if i didn't do that i can actually go ahead and see i can like it shows me the screens and that's all based on what i've uh done as the type definitions earlier right so check this out <coughs> uh Sudarshan says is it possible for me to do react native if i've done react before hell yes 100 percent yes right and six likes six likes away from 400 smash it just destroy it right so go ahead and hit save. And now we can see we've got the, uh, well, nothing visible, right? I'm gonna add in the navigation object. Let's go pop that in like so. We need to pull in our hook. There we go. And now on press of the touchable opacity button here, I wanna navigate. So I'm gonna do an arrow function. Say navigation dot navigate to the paywall, okay? Now let's go ahead and try it out. If I click this now, pow, all right? So firstly, 
That doesn't look like a modal, Sonny. That looks like a screen that you've disabled the header for. And you're right. That's because that is exactly what it is. It's a screen where I've disabled the header for it. And it's a bit of a pain in the um, something to go back. Uh, right? So, okay. So, I'm going to get it back. There we go. Right? Um, so, in this case, I'm going to go back to app.tsx. And here, I'm going to basically do something now. So what you can do is you can actually change the uh, presentation type. So in this case, it's called headers shown false, which we want to keep. But I can actually change the presentation to a few different options. You've got contained modal, all these different ones, full screen modal. I want the card modal, right? So in this case, bam, I hit the card modal. Uh, I hit the modal, sorry. And then I click upgrade and look at this. Oh, nice. Now I get this like swipe down beautifulness, right? So look at that. So we swipe down. Oh, it's just clean. So clean, right? So look at that. So everything just works the way we wanted it, right? And then what I want to do is have a little X icon and all this kind of nice styling. So we're going to go ahead, add this styling, and then these buttons will generate based on the actual things that we pull through afterwards once we're set up, right? So <clears throat> I am going to go to my paywall. I'm going to go over here to paywall, and I'm going to start styling out this thing so i'm going to firstly change the view to a scroll scroll view view i don't know why i'm saying that one view and um i want to get some new songs in here let's go down to the bottom let's do some there we go that's better all right and um oh my god three likes away let's go all right so for the scroll view i'm gonna say class name and we say bg and we're gonna change our back i've got a nice little color here and i'm gonna say flex one as well so just like so, yeah. And then for this, instead, we're gonna get rid of the text. We don't want that. Instead, I'm gonna have a view with a text button saying upgrade to pro to access all the features. So again, I'm not gonna show you exactly all this little bits and bobs like this, cause that's very like easy to follow, right? I'm, I'm just adding two text fields inside of a view with a bit of spacing, right? And, and I'm making it uppercase, so it up, up, uh, makes it all capitalized. Uh, boom 400 likes that's what i'm talking about that's it that's what i mean as, as soon as the beat dropped as well <laughs> so sick all right and then we're gonna go to touchable opacity so we're gonna create a touchable opacity to basically close it so touchable opacity and in here i've got a nice ionic on all right so ionic on pop this in like so and then at the top i'm gonna import it so let's go up to our, oh, okay, over here. Pop it in like so, save. And now you can see I've got a nice little X. And I wanna go ahead and say on press. <laughs> nice little X, so no one ever, <laughs> right? So here we're gonna go to, <laughs> we're gonna go ahead and pull in a navigation prop, native stack navigation prop, root params. And this time we're in the paywall screen, hence why it's gonna be say paywall. Uh, and then we're gonna add our navigation object in, cause we're gonna need the navigation, right? Pull this in like so, use navigation. Cool. And then I'm gonna basically go to that little X and say on press. I'm gonna say navigation dot go back. And again, signature, so that way it should just work. So in this case, upgrade. Click the little X and it goes back. Nice. Oh, this is awesome. Jean-Pierre Casanova says, are you gonna upload to GitHub? Yes, I am. I just didn't upload it yet because I didn't want everyone to just copy it like the code before the video was live, right? Um, but yeah, we will be doing it. Okay. So at this point, let's um, let's get the, let's get likes to 500. A oh, bang. Right, let's get it to 500. Let's go. All right. So <clears throat> inside of the paywall now, I'm gonna go ahead and add in the um, content. So this bit, right? So we got the view. So this is gonna be all the content that you see basically, right? And then over here. So now we're gonna go ahead and pop in a bunch of text. So this one again is just gonna have, um, so I've basically got three repeated sections here, each with different styling. And I'm just gonna basically pop it in for the essence of time, right? So that way you guys can get a kind of a, you don't have to spend that long and copying me here for that, right? So basically this is the first chunk and I'm gonna show you what that did. So you see what it did here? So it basically popped in access to all pro features. The second one that I'm gonna pop in, and this is just literally views and text boxes. That's all it is, right? So the first one was that. And then outside of that, we've got the next block. 
which is again the exact same block so you can feel free to go ahead and prop that out in a different way or make it into its own component and then the final one is going to be another block again and they're all just different icons and basically different bits of text that's all it is right the only thing i do that is bothering me so much right now is that button styling because i forgot to completely forgot to style it my bad right so that button right there i'm going to go ahead and say that it should be absolute it should be top zero it should be right of zero and it should be padding of five yeah there we go and now you should see there we go that looks pretty good we forgot the logo <laughs> i literally forgot the logo so let's add in the logo here in this case i'm going to go ahead and have a view with a material oh yeah so in this case uh, the reason why i'm doing a view here is i'm not doing a picture logo i'm actually using a different type of uh uh, icon here so material community icons and the material community icons is an example of how you can use different icons not just icons so in this case we've got the material icons and trophy award 150 and then i put in a view because i want to basically go ahead and center it so in this case i can go ahead and just say items in the center of this view and bam it works okay now for the content block i'm going to go ahead and pop in the following say space between each y component of five so pat peter asked previously if space y worked yes it does panning x of uh 10 and a panning top of five allows us to space it out give us a bit more breathing room and a padding bottom of five as well now because we've got padding bottom and top of five we can shorthand this to padding y of five and that's a cleaner way to do it okay so this is looking pretty neat so far very nice okay and then what i'm going to do now is basically i am going to add in these two buttons actually what i want to do is i want to add in the buttons as we do that right so what i'm going to do is i'm actually going to pop in here is i'm going to have one button which says monthly subscribe i'm going to have another button which says annual subscribe and then i'm going to have one more button called restore purchases okay and that's going to be these three right so these ones okay so now this is where it gets intense right so um someone says it's the worst that your live streams fall in the middle of my birthday but I'll check it out after the weekend as always honestly dude it's probably best that you catch it even afterwards because we, we actually timestamp it as well but it's awesome that you actually got a chance to catch it live right so um let's see so i hit save and now we got this. So basically all of our screens are prepped in the way that I want. And I'm actually gonna have it so that if they're locked, it's also gonna be uh, sending me to the paywall, right? But the paywall, but I'm gonna determine if I'm locked in a, a little bit when I basically can figure out if you're subscribed to Pro or not. So this is where we bring in Revenue Cat, right? So Revenue Cat is, as I mentioned before, the platform that we're gonna be using to handle our in-app subscriptions, okay? And the reason for this is it makes all of the, you know, the, the sort of connecting, the things that we need, making sure that we're listing the correct offers, all it makes everything around the subscriptions fairly straightforward. Now, the first step that I'm gonna need you to do and this is a bit where I'm going to need you all to basically focus, right? I need everyone to kind of, you know, dial in now, right? So at this point, I'm going to be showing you the App Store Connect, right? And I say that with like some, some whoa, the App Store Connect, because it gets a bit more like you have to kind of concentrate on the little details here because there's a few areas where you can slip up. So make sure you just take your time. If it gets confusing, pause it, rewind it, watch it back, whatever you need to do to get it right. Now, I want to mention the App Store Connect you need access to the developer program in the play store i believe it's free so you can follow the play store and, and use the docs to basically get the play store working but i'm going to be showing you the ios version of it right so um if you want to go ahead and check that out there's a lot of tutorials already on youtube up about that and again as i mentioned if this gets over a thousand likes i'll do one for android as well right so what we're going to now do is basically set up the app store connect right so in this case app store connect is basically a suite of web tools and we use it to basically manage all of the things like subscriptions all of that stuff right so at this point we actually need to set up our subscriptions on app store connect and then we have to set up on google play and again i'm not going to do that i'm only going to do app store connect and then what we do is once we have all of that data set up on the actual platforms we basically give our special keys to revenue cat and revenue cat is where we basically carry on the rest of the things right so first things first is i've actually gone ahead and paid for 99 dollars um, for an app store developer account um, in this case i've actually so i'm going to go ahead and sign into app store connect 
So let that sign in for a second. And again, if you haven't done it, it's completely fine. You can go ahead and you, there's nothing to freak out about, right? Um, you can uh, you can just watch this tutorial or you could be doing this on Google Play if you want to, okay? So we're going to go to App Store Connect. So at this point, I clicked over here, go to App Store Connect. And then I'm going to go ahead and log into my account. So in this case, I've logged into an account. And basically, when you do the App Store Connect, you're going to have to agree to the terms and conditions. You're going to have to set up your banking and that's going to allow you to enable certain things that you're going to need to do, like deployments, that kind of stuff. And you obviously have to pay the 99, right? So at this point... We click onto my apps and I've already got some dummy apps here, but I'm actually going to go ahead and create one. So I've got a revenue app, revenue cap. This is one I used when I was preparing and this was like a mess around one. So what we're going to do here is create new app. Okay. So really try and focus along now, please. Yeah. Cause it gets quite intricate. So click on new app and then we're going to say it's going to be on iOS, right? And the name of this app is going to be, um, let's go ahead and do the following. I'm just going to say, um, let's pop in uh, something like, revenue or let's just say youtube revenue youtube demo right so my youtube demo that's it All right cool easy as primary language we're gonna say is english and i'm from the uk so uk in it and then we go ahead and do this and you can see bundle id now in this case the bundle id we don't actually have our app deployed yet right so here must want to use an Xcode. I can't change if you upload your first board. Okay, so in this case, we actually need to go ahead and register our new bundle. Now, the, what we actually have to do is deploy this app first and get a bundle up, right? So I'll show you how we do this. So I'm going to pause here, go back to our code. Where the heck is my editor? Okay, yeah, back here. And this is where EAS comes in, so the Expo application service, right? So at this point, we're going to pause on our app development. We're going to handle the nitty gritty stuff. Um, I'm going to go back to, where is it gone? Here, yeah. right? And over here, so EAS build, EAS submit, that kind of stuff, right? So I'm just double checking my notes as well because it does get a little bit confusing. All right, so first things first, we need to create a test device, right? So I'm going to go ahead and basically connect my actual phone as a test device for this build. So that way I can actually go ahead and do things. So inside my, what the heck is it, right? So inside my code, I'm gonna go ahead and do EAS device colon create, okay? And at this point, what it will do is it will pop up and it will say, okay, there's an update, all right? So I'm not gonna do that, but that's fine. I'm gonna use the one that we already have. And you can see it says, would you like to automatically create an EAS project for Revenue Cat app YouTube, which is the one that I am in right now. So yes, I'm going to say uh, enter. Creating Revenue Cat on Expo. Cool. And now this is basically the interesting part. So this command is basically um, link local project to EAS project. Yes, there you go. This a command lets you register Apple devices for internal distribution of your app, which is basically how we're going to test it. So what you're doing is you're deploying it to your internal distribution network, which is in this case us, right? So we need to go ahead and create an Expo account. So at this point, if you weren't logged in, you'll be prompted to log in. I've already logged in, so I'm going to go ahead and hit enter. Now we need to log into our Apple developer account. Now this is where you, and I expect a lot of people to kind of, you know, at this point you either watch on or you're going to basically get the US dollar app store connect subscription fee. But at this point you would have to enter in your app uh, store developer account details. So, so in this case, I've already done that. I've already got an App Store developer account. So in this case, I've done that. And then I've actually logged in. So it's gone ahead and used my login uh, for my keychain. And now it will say, what account do you want to do? So my main account is uh, my name. And then you've got the Reactive Entrepreneur is my podcast. So that is also an Apple uh, product that we have, right? So it's a podcast. And if you haven't checked it out, definitely go check it out. Right? I'm going to do more podcast episodes. So at this point, we're going to go ahead and do uh, my name. So we're going to go ahead and pop that in, Sergeant Sango. And then it says, how would you like to register your device? Okay. So at this point, you've got a few different things that you can do, but the easiest one by far is to click website. Okay. So if I go ahead and click website, now it gives us a QR code with this on it. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you my phone. So I'm going to go take it over to my actual phone. So where's my phone? There we go. Boom. Okay. And now I've got my phone in my hand. Right, so this is literally a live example of my phone, right? So I'm going to go to my camera, right? 
I'm going to go here and I'm going to say Expo Dev. And this is going to pop up a screen saying Expo Dev. Set up your device for internal distribution. And then it says download profile. So at this point, I'm going to click download profile. And it says website is down, trying to download a configuration profile. I'm going to click on allow. And it says profile downloaded. Review the profile in settings app if you want to install it. So at this point, I want you to head into your settings, right? So I'm going to just um, hide my screen for a second while I go into my settings. I don't want anything to pop up that shouldn't. Um, so in this case, I'm in my settings now. And I'm going to go and type in the following. I'm going to type in profile. Okay, so the easiest thing that you can do at this point is go into your settings. I'm just typed in in the settings app. So I've gone to the top and I've typed in profile. Then you have VPN and a device management. Click it. Okay, so at this point, I now have a VPN. So in this case, it says VPN screen and it says downloaded profile here. Register for development. I click it. And as you can see, I've got the profile on my screen. Okay, so now you can see I've got the profile on my screen. And what I've essentially done here is I've basically gone ahead and enrolled in it. And I've already installed this, so I don't need to install it again. But if I was to do it, you can see I can pop in my password. So in this case, I pop it in and then install. All right, so the install will come up. Now I've already done this, so I'm not going to do that. Okay, so at this point, you should then have your uh, register for deploy, uh, de development, right? So once you've done that, you also need to make sure you enable developer mode. So I'm going to show you how to also do developer mode. So once you're on your phone, go to your settings and then you want to go to, let me just find it again. Um, this one, I always actually lose where it is. Oh yeah. So you want to go to privacy and security. Okay. I'm just trying to check. There we go. Yeah. So you want to head to privacy and security tab next. You want to go all the way down to developer mode. Hit OK. And then you should be able to enable this, right? Enable this setting because this is going to allow us to install internal distribution apps onto our test device, our iPhone. Okay. So, um, oh, wow. Carolyn says, before I go to work, I started coming to some videos, back with his videos uh, back in the day. I'm now a full stack developer and it's down. He's the go. Thank you, dude. I appreciate you. And that is awesome. Right. Uh, that's, that's mad, man. Thank you so much. Right. So at this point, we've got this. So I'm going to go back. And then you're also going to have, um, where did it go? Okay, that's fine for now. For now, for now, that's completely fine. Yeah. So once you've done that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to my previous app just to kind of have a placeholder there. So now we've registered the phone. Okay. So now this phone will be able to accept, you know, um, something if we were to push it to the distribution network. Okay. So everything's good on that front. Uh, let me move my, there we go. Move my code back. Okay, cool. So now that that is done, we've added our device. So our device has now been added successfully. And then what I need you to do is go ahead and we're going to go ahead and build, create a, uh, a development build for our app. Now, and the way we do this is we go ahead and say EAS build. Okay. Then we're going to say dash dash profile development. Okay. Then we're going to say dash, dash dash platform iOS. So I'm building a, uh, uh, a development build for the iOS platform. Okay. Hit enter. And then you'll see it will go ahead and it will start something called an iOS um, internal distribution build. Now, this is the important part. Remember where it said you needed a bundle, bundle identifier. We didn't have that right in, uh, in the app store connect settings. This is where we basically do it. So in this case, I'm going to leave it as it is revenue cat app YouTube. And then I'm going to hit enter. Okay. And then in this case, it will say, if you provide your Apple account, it will be able to generate all the necessary bill credit and fully validate them, blah, blah, blah. In that case, I'm going to say yes. It makes my life easier. So I've already done that. So I've already got my Apple account. Again, this will fail if you haven't got the App Store Connect developer, if you haven't paid for your developer fee, right? So $99 or it depends where you are in the world, but that's what I had to pay. And in this case, you can see we've got all of our stuff. And then we have basically it will ask us to create a distribution certificate. Okay. So in this case, I've already created the distribution certificate. You, in this case, will actually have to do that. So it will prompt you at this point to do that. I've done that. So I'm going to go ahead and hit enter so to reuse my distribution certificate. Then you see select devices for the ad hoc build. Now, this is the important part. That's my phone, right? So in that case, my phone is now registered. So but from the previous step, that's why it's there. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and hit enter now. And then you can see handling and lock provisioning profiles. Basically, it's just securing it. So only my phone is going to be able to use this app, right? Um, there we go. 
and then it gets pushed out bam 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 all credentials are ready to build would you like to set up push notifications no not for this one yeah and then we're going to upload to eas build okay so now this is uploading to eas build and this is basically where it gets queued for a build okay so let's go ahead and check this out now so if i go to this link right here what we will see is we will see this being built out and i'm just waiting it load on another screen and i'm going to bring it over to the screen so right now what we can see is it will take me to this screen and you'll see that this is actually going to go ahead and build out an internal distribution build now the confusing part is you're probably wondering hang on a minute so i have to i have to rebuild and deploy every time i make a change in my app no the actual crazy part that's really cool here is you do this build once, right? And then what you do is you basically open the app up on your phone, which I'll show you how to do, right? And then what happens is as you update the uh, app on your phone, because you're running Expo Start, right? So it's running a server on your local machine. Because you're on the same Wi-Fi network, it streams the updates to your phone, which is damn cool, right? So you're developing and you're literally seeing the streamed updates to your phone, it's so cool All right so it's actually uh, i was pretty mind blown when i saw that right so this will take a minute to, to go ahead and uh, deploy so we're going to let that do its thing right and in the meantime we're going to go back over to apple to the app store connect settings right so in this case the bundle id and here you can see if we go cancel i need to basically refresh whoo right Yes. Oh, that's a very good point. Gigi Mark says, keep in mind, if you add any modules or packages to the project, you need to rebuild 100%, right? If you do any uh, yarn or, you know, like you add in a new dependency or anything like that, or for example, you add it in Tailwind, right? Then you have to do that EAS build step again, because there's new dependencies that have to be built. It can't just stream the entire dependency and it has to build that in the bundle. It can stream the UI updates, but it can't stream like entire dependencies. So in that case, yes, very good comment. Thank you so much. That's why comments are so important for you guys to interact with me, right? So in this case, we'll create a new app. I just want to see as well. Let's click bundle ID. Hey, there we go, guys. Revenue Cat App YouTube. That's the one that we have. Awesome stuff. Uh, someone says, take a water break. You look tired. Oh, I will. Thank you very much. Right. I will have one in one sec. So here we're going to type in just YouTube demo iOS. YouTube demo app, right? Primary language is English UK. And then SKU. Uh, let's just say YouTube app demo. I really don't make a difference. Uh, user access. Um, you can register yourself. So if you want to yourself, okay, fine. Uh, let's just click on. Da, da, da. I think I did full access right now, but um, okay, let's do full access for now. Okay, now I'm gonna have a quick water break, and you guys should too as well, right? So that's gonna create a new app in the App Store, right? Oh, we have our first app in the App Store, guys! Smash the like button. Almost at 450 right let's keep going okay so at this point now you can see down here subscriptions all right so this is where we start getting really fancy all right so we start doing some crazy stuff <laughs> but basically what we now need to do is create a subscription right now you can also start messing around with in-app purchases for single purchases that kind of stuff but we're going to be covering subscriptions today so i'm going to go to subscriptions and let's just have a look on that build one second okay so you see that builds building it's gonna take about 10 minutes so in the meantime we're going to set this up so this is where um revenue cat and the next bit go hand in hand right so what we're going to do is we're going to click on subscription groups, right? And what I'm actually going to do is just have a reference open on the side so I can teach you in a smooth way. I don't make a mistake. That's silly. Um, it's published for all now. No. So basically Kirby asked a good question. So right now it's basically deploying to an internal distribution. Uh, it's basically making this and deploying an internal distribution build, but only my phone can access that because of the way I added it to my EAS network earlier. Right, so you have to add the provisioning profile to be able to access that, and then you and you also have to enable developer mode. Okay, um, so quite important. Yeah, um, still in Dubai. Yes, I am Simon. So in this case, subscription groups. Let's click on create, and in this case, we're going to create a subscription group. And here, what I'm going to call it is let's call it our pro subscription. Okay, pro subscription. Let's call it and click create. 
And this is a subscription group, so you can have different subscriptions inside of here. Now, inside of here, I'm going to have two subscriptions. One is going to be pro monthly, and one is going to be pro annual. So here I'm going to click on create, and this one's going to be pro monthly product ID here. Let's go ahead and say that this one is just going to be our pro, right? So I'm just going to call this one pro, and then I'm going to call the next one pro annual, right? So, um, Thank you so much, MK. He goes, doing so much good, bro. Appreciate how many effort you put into these. I really appreciate that comment. Thank you so much. Right. Um, so we're going to call pro monthly pro and then pro annual is going to be pro annual. Right. So it's called create. Uh, oh, I've already done that. <laughs> yeah. So I've already got an app that's doing this. So I'm going to say pro monthly. Let's just do pro monthly and pro yearly. Okay. So pro monthly. There we go. Actually, probably easier to be fair. It's probably clearer. Right now we've got this. Now this is the important part. Okay, so we have to fill this out correctly. Now the subscription duration is going to be for one week. Right. So in this case, oh sorry, one month. Right. Now uh, I'm, this bit, I want you to kind of take your time, go through it. Uh, someone goes, I want to come to Dubai just to say hello, BB, come to Dubai. Right. So in this case, uh, you guys do correct me out. Right. So we got one month. Right. So this is a monthly subscription. And then we're going to go to subscription prices, right? Now, this is where you can have a localized pricing. So in this case, we're going to go ahead and say, um, Derek, what's up, man? Good to see you back, dude. Thank you so much. Add subscription price. And in this case, we can add in, you know, different prices, that kind of thing. So in the, let's just imagine our monthly price for this app was £4.99, right? You can say whatever, you know, region uh, you want. Click next. And then look what it's going to do. <laughs> it will calculate the price internationally now this is something i really actually like about the app store is that you know for example if you wanted to make it cheaper in a certain country you can actually go ahead and do that so for example i know in some countries uh, especially um when we have i have certain audiences who basically want us to reduce pricing in certain countries you can definitely do that right so you can definitely do that here and you can make it cheaper in some countries you can make it more in other countries whatever you decide it's up to you it's your app right so in this case we're going to do that we're going to say next and this we're doing it in all these countries. You click confirm. Make sure you're looking for it, and then confirm. You can also download it. All right, so let's do that. And then, uh, nowhere else do you get professional advice. Ah, oh, thank you so much. And a full package, changing the game with every legend pop fan. Legend, that's it. Awesome stuff. And I'm so happy you guys are enjoying this as well. That's amazing. All right. So you can see current pricing for new subscribers. Good stuff. And then we've got App Store localization, right? So in this case, you can actually go ahead and change how it would appear in different areas of different apps, for example, right? So in this case, you can go ahead and pop in um, so localization, so how it would appear in Arabic, how it would appear in English, and so forth. So in this case, imagine we had like a pro monthly discount, right? So pro monthly, sorry, subscription. So pro monthly, and then you could say something like, let's just say pro monthly so a pro monthly subscription to access pro stuff to access pro basically yeah so basically you can you can base um I keep saying basically sorry guys you can you can go ahead <laughs> and change all of that so basically in all of the different stores it would say different things i'm gonna try my best to not keep repeating what i just said right so then you need to base then you need to Take a screenshot of the app, okay? So in this case, take a screenshot of the app. And what I've done here is I've already got a screenshot of another app, or I've honestly just taken any screenshot here. But really what you can do to really kind of easily make your life super clear here is you can just go ahead and go click, and then that'll take a screenshot, right? <laughs> so that's, if you didn't know that, you can actually do that fairly straightforward. So I've, I've done that here. And um, obviously what you should do is actually make that relevant. Right, so make that a relevant screenshot, not just some random one like I just did. Um, and I'm just going to try and find where my actual um, screenshot went. So I'm not sure why it just disappeared for a second. Um, let me just go ahead and I'm just hiding my screen for a second to help not show everything. Yeah, so that's a click, quick way to clip a screenshot. And then here I'm just going to say test uh, app development. Yeah, so obviously in the real world, you would add like a pro screen or something like this and then actually explain, you know, this is for pro. It's going to have a lot more um, 
it's gonna have a <laughs> I don't know to call it. there's gonna have a lot more description here about what your pro offers right if this is an actual production app you would obviously put a lot of time into this point and then do that right so we're gonna go ahead and hit save cool and then patty says i was so curious about how to connect mobile apps to the app store this tutorial is insane thank you so much i'm glad you're enjoying it right family sharing as well you can turn on here and i think it was here that i did the other step as well for the trial i think it was here no was it that no, was in a different bit i think okay but anyway we're going to go back so we've done that bit and basically you want it in a oh no so it's, if it's missing missing the area it's not good it should be in a ready to submit state uh, add localizations we need to do so add localizations app store localization oh yeah so at the top level we need to add app store localization so in this case subscription groups we can just call it pro um monthly oh no sorry pro subscription um keep it as the app name custom name blah 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 in this case is the english customization but obviously you can add as many as you want and i would honestly say you should right if you have an arabic audience you want to allow your arabic audience to see everything in arabic if you have a indian audience you want to see everything in punjabi or hindi or you know any language you want french um spanish whatever you want it's all going to be here that's where you add in the different languages okay so now we're going to go ahead and pop in another one we're going to say pro annual okay and then here or pro yearly let's call it pro yearly right and this one's going to be called pro pro yearly okay and click create okay du, du, du. and now you can see that's better subscription duration is one year so this will be a yearly subscription and we're going to do the same thing right so in this case let's imagine your yearly subscription was like 30 34.99 I right, say so it would be cheaper to subscribe yearly than it would to be to annual because obviously that's the way it works. In most cases, we're going to confirm all of our pricing options. And then let's just go ahead and check on our app build. So you can see that's got five minutes remaining. So we're doing pretty well, guys. It's actually really good. This actually worked out very well. Right. Uh, app store localization. And also, by the way, you're, you're probably going to have to fill out your taxes and all that kind of stuff when you set up your app store connect account. Okay. Um, Repon, so what's up, dude? absolute localization let's do it here so we can say pro yearly and then description we can say uh, your access to pro yearly subscription okay like so ali atan says hey man at Alton, sorry, I completely messed up. Hey man, thanks for everything. I did one of your tutorials, but couldn't deploy it. But I still learned a lot from you. Much love from Turkey. Awesome stuff. If you can't deploy it and you want help, remember you can always join Zero to Full Stack Hero. The community is awesome for helping out everyone get over their hurdles, right? And same thing over here, by the way. Uh, we're going to add in a screenshot. So I'm just going to add a dummy screenshot for now. And remember, there actually has to be a correct sort of. Um, it has to be in the correct dimension right, or the correct resolution. So that's why I did a direct screenshot from the phone itself. And it will tell you that it's incorrect if you're not giving it a correct resolution one, right? So I'm going to say pro yearly subscription test, right? So obviously it should be fully thought out, right? And then we're going to click on save, I believe. So save. Yep, that's all good. Save. Do, 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 do. Okay, this is doing well. Come on, guys. Well, oh, we've just passed 450 likes. Nice. Okay, so save and hit back. So subscriptions. Now we've got our pro monthly, our pro yearly. This is good. Um, and then we go back to subscriptions. And you can see now we've also got one. Where did I add in? There's also a way while we're waiting for the app to get deployed. There's also a, where, a place where you can actually go ahead and add in a free promotion like a like a, a weekly trial or something like that uh i'm just trying to remember me for the life of me where i put it i think it was in our subscription non-renewing subscription no i think it was in no it wasn't there just trying to find it guys one second pro monthly was it in pro monthly i'm just checking my previous build okay and then okay well i mean we'll touch on it in revenue cap i believe it could be in revenue cap i'm sure it was here though but anyway we'll come to that okay so now 
we need to basically go ahead and prepare to connect this to revenue cap, right? So once we've got this down, you need to go to users and access, right? So click on users and access, and then you should have this area, right? So you've got me, you've got sandbox testers. So this is important now, guys. So this one, you'd, okay, now I, I stress this when I say this, use a different sandbox ID compared to your normal Apple ID. Right. And then when you have your sandbox ID, you actually have to set that up in your, your iPhone settings. So the place to do that is actually in. So I think it's, uh, let me see, where is it? Sandbox settings. So where the hell do I put it? Um, it is in. Okay. Uh, I will find it. Basically it's in developer mode settings. So developer mode. It's in, if you go to privacy and security, it's in, it is in developer mode. Yeah. Okay. Strange, but I can't find it for some reason. Anyway, there's a, there's a point where you need to find it. Right. Uh, and we will find it. So don't worry. Uh, I'll definitely find it afterwards. Okay. So at this point I want to go to, um, here and I want to basically create a sandbox tester. So I've already created one and I've done UAE, right? Cause I'm in Dubai, right? But obviously that's why I was seeing Durham's, right? With the currency here, when I was um, trying to purchase. Now, the really good thing about this is that basically you can have a, you know, an, um, an email and a password. And basically once you click edit and you click it, you can click on clear purchase history. Now, what this does is, is it simulates you never having bought the test subscription in the first place. So you can try the subscription out, then you can click on clear purchase history, and then it will basically go ahead and act as if you never did the subscription. Right? Remember, obviously it's all fake anyway, it's like in sandbox mode, right? So that's important. And then we're gonna have keys. Now keys is obviously our next important thing. So if we go to in app purchase, you can see we've got a subscription key, right? So this is gonna be important as well in just a second as well. So firstly, let's go over to, um, our revenue cat. So revenue cat is the place to be. This is where we're going to basically set everything up to make the whole app work. So we're going to go ahead and log into revenue cap. So I'm going to log in right now. And you can see I've already got a few projects here right now. We're going to go to projects. We're going to create a new project and we're going to go ahead and call this one, um, YouTube revenue cat demo. Okay. Create project. Now, in this case, we can start by adding an app. So it's super easy to actually follow the instructions, okay? Guys, we're almost at 500 likes. That is sick. All right, keep going. <laughs> um, so check this out. So in this case, we're going to go ahead and do App Store. And remember, you can actually hook up App Store, Play Store, Stripe, and Amazon in one place, which is damn sick. So we're going to click on App Store. Then we're going to go ahead and type in, um, just, just call it YouTube, YouTube, Revenue Cat, Revenue Cat. Up. It doesn't really make a difference, right? And then let's go back to our, so the uh, bundle ID is quite important, right? So inside of our code, what you will find in eas.json is, is it eas.json? No, it wasn't here. It was app.json, I think. No, app.json, yeah. So iOS bundle identifier is here. Okay, so there it is. You want to copy it from app.json bundle identifier. And then you basically want to go back to over here and paste it. Okay. Now you've got app store connect app shared specific secrets. So if you click on I, it'll say, what the hell is that? And it will tell you basically where to go to get it. So in this case, we need the key. So all you need to do is go into your app store, connect my apps, select your app, app information, general manage, and then you should see app specific shared secret. So I'm going to go into it right now. So I'm going to go into the app. So let's go into our app. So this is my demo app. Then we're going to go into, was it services? I can't remember. Um, was it services? Do, do, do. App information. Yeah, it's okay. I found it. Yeah. So app information on the left. And then we're going to go to app shared app specific shared secret click on manage and then here generate so i'm going to click generate and i'm going to hide my screen so i'm clicking generate and what's happened is it's given me a shared secret so i'm copying my shared secret right now right so i'm smashing the copy button and make sure you note this down because otherwise you have to regenerate it if you if you lose it okay so i've copied it now 
Then what I'm doing is I'm going over to my revenue cap now. Okay, so I've gone over to my revenue cap and I'm going to click on set secret. And I'm going to paste in the value here and then I'm going to click set. Okay, so I'm pasting in the value and then I'm clicking set. And that's it, right? So I've saved my secret now. Then you've got in-app purchase. Uh, we don't need to do that right now, but eventually you will need to put in a P8 file from App Store Connect. Um, so I would Google that. Once you go to the, the actual um, full deployment, you're gonna have to have that, right? So we'll, we'll do that there, or you can do that in another tutorial, I think. For now, we'll save the changes. We'll go over to, you can see now it's pulling everything in. Let's go to API keys. Um, we've got a key over here. So this is going to be our public specific key. So in this case, this is a special key we're going to actually need to use very shortly. Okay. Um, and then we're going to go over to... Uh, da, da, da. Oh, yeah, here. This is where the magic happens. All right. So products, offerings, entitlements. Right. So these are different ways in which you can go ahead and pass the basically your app information. Right. So think of it this way. Products are going to essentially be the lowest level. They're going to be essentially the in-app purchases, the in-app subscriptions. So in our case here, what we're going to have, we're going to have different products for different reasons. Now, I'm just going to quickly make sure I get this 100 percent right so I don't make a mistake in teaching this. But. What we essentially have is for products, we're going to have pro monthly and pro yearly. Okay, so let's go ahead and click new. And you can see we're clicking on our YouTube app and here. Now, the identifier is very important. Remember previously what we did was we set up our subscription. So let's go back to subscriptions. Inside of subs subscription groups, you can go ahead and see these two product IDs, right? So subscription, pro monthly, pro yearly. So you want to take the ID. This is very important. You get the ID right. You're going to copy the identifier here. So we're going to do monthly first, create a product. Okay, so it's the lowest level, right? Now we've got this. Now you've got entitlements, right? And you've also got offerings, right? So in this case, we've got entitlements. We've also got offerings. So the first thing we want to do here is we want to have... Um, where is it? So we need to create a entitlement here. And the entitlement here is going to be the pro monthly. And this is going to say pro access to all features, right? Add. And you can see it says zero products. We go into our products. We attach the association to it. There you go. Okay. Now, the way that I like to do it is you can do it with entitlements, but offerings is kind of the simpler way to do it. So offerings are basically a selection of products that are offered to a user on a paywall. So you can do entitlements are slightly different. They basically represent a level of access, right? Um, so if you see pro access and so forth, right? So in fact, I made a mistake here. I actually did it as... No, no, I did a mistake here. No. Yeah, that I did. So, okay. So in this case, folk, I would, don't worry about entitlements for now. We're not doing that. We're doing more so on the paywall side of things. So go on to paywall and um, offerings and we're going to go on new. Okay. Now for the paywall here, we're going to call this um, pro. Okay. And we're going to say the pro membership, um, pro membership subscription. Okay. And then add. And now, as you can see, inside of here, we're going to have two um, packages inside of here. One is going to be for monthly, one is going to be for annual. Okay. So inside of here, let's go ahead and add in the uh, monthly. So in this case, identify a monthly. You see this custom. And we're going to go ahead and say pro. So just pro monthly is here. Okay. And you can see what we do is we attach the product to it. So in this case, I attach my monthly product to it. So that's it. That's the easiest way you want to do it. So offerings, then we have pro. And inside of here, we'll have two selections. Each one is going to be attached to its product. So monthly, and we need to make a yearly now. So let's go ahead and do the same thing for the app. So we're going to say pro yearly. This was the same thing we did here for pro yearly. Okay. Create product. And now we go to offerings. We go to pro. We go to, oh no, sorry, go back. Uh, yeah, pro, sorry. And create a new one called identifier is yearly. So annual. And then we'll say yearly uh, pro subscription, basically. Add. 
Oh, I, I, oh God. that's going to bug me so much. All right, there we go. Pro Yelly. <laughs> There you go. I, I didn't think it was undoable, but there we are. There's no need to freak out. Pro monthly, pro yearly. And then I'm going to basically attach it to the pro yearly. There we go. So you see, once you connect all of this up, then you can basically, we, we connect it. We set it up correctly the first way, the first time. So products, then offerings is what we're doing. We're not touching entitlements today. Okay. Um, so products and offerings is what we're doing. And then you've also got your integrations, experiments, A-B testing, all that kind of stuff. Okay. So in this case, um, for this, uh, it's got no associated timers for now. That's fine. Okay. So now what we can do is, I believe actually, you know what? We should actually pass this to. So for now, just to get rid of this error, I'm going to pop in. I'm going to say this is pro access, right? Just entitlement pro and associated products are pro yearly and pro monthly. Okay. Because if you're, yeah, so you can either do it by entitlement. So in this case, a level of access. So pro, for example, it should be pro. Well, why is that called pro? It should be, I have I didn't updated it, no? Oh, the description only changed. Okay. So really I would have named that pro and then I would have had pro monthly, pro yearly. But anyway, you should, the easiest way is products, then offerings, set up your offerings. Okay, cool. Now that that's done, I think we're good to go on this front. Okay, here we are. State build in progress. So now this build is almost done. Good stuff, all right? It's quite, it's faster the second time. It's just obviously it's got a cache here the first time. Okay, so now that that's good, what we're gonna do is basically start coding the, the our app to get it all in the correct state that it needs to use. Okay, so let's go to our code. And let's start creating things as we need it. So that way we're ready when it's when it's uh, deployed. Okay. So I'm going to create something called a custom hook. Okay. So in React, this is a very good thing to know how to do. So we're going to go ahead and do that right now. And we're almost at 500 likes. So let's go, guys. Absolutely incredible. We're going to create a folder called hooks. And I'm going to create a file called use revenue cat. Right. Dot TS. All right. And now in here. Oh no, sorry, this is a dot TypeScript. Oh yeah, dot TS. Mm, let's just put an X on it for now, because I mean you could potentially, right? So in this case, here we're gonna have a functional component. So really all this is is a React Native functional component. Or it's actually just a it's just a function, right? So it's a function and we're gonna call it use revenue cat and it's a custom hook now. So you're also learning how to make custom hooks in this tutorial. And we're also gonna say export. And this one is not going to export. Yeah, it's export default revenue. So yeah, there you are. Okay. So this is the start. This is your base. Now what we're going to do is we're going to have all of the sort of, you know, clever logic and the stuff associated around this. So first thing I need is I need a bunch of different imports from um, React Native and React Native purchases. So let's pop those in right now. Okay. So we've got platform, which tells us, which will help us determine what we're on, Android or iOS, purchases, customer info, and purchase offering, right? So React Native purchases, this is how we're gonna connect to Revenue Cap, right? Um, why can't we integrate the payroll directly in our code? Uh, because we remember, we're trying to do everything in a cross-platform sense. Revenue Cap allows us to do that cross-platform approach with one bit of code. If you're doing it directly to the App Store, you're gonna have to do it directly for iOS, directly for Android. In this case, you do it in one instance and it works for both. That's why you want to do it. Okay. Obviously, I'm only showing you the uh, the, the the single way of doing it. Right. So, in this case, I'm only gonna do this for as a demo tutorial purposes. But you should be storing these in um, what's it called in environment variables. But here, just to simplify it, so you can see it all in the same um, same screen. So your revenue cat Google API key for here. We're gonna use the revenue cat. Um, uh, iOS key. So let's go back to our revenue cat, go to API keys, and we will have a public key that we will use. So you can see here, public app specific API keys. We're going to take that key and we're going to pop it in here. And this should be in a, in a, in a special file, right? It shouldn't be in, it should be an environment file. And then we're going to say const, and then this is where we start preparing our state. Okay, so I'm gonna call, I'm gonna create a few different things here to keep track of, right? And this, so this is actually going to return us three things. 
I want to know the current offerings that we have in Revenue Cat. So I want to know what membership uh, options we have. So like pro yearly, pro monthly. I want to know the customer's current information and their current state. And I want to know if the user is a pro member. All in this function, all neatly wrapped up, right? And I'm going to show you how easy that is, right? So we're going to say current offering. So one for the current offerings. Uh, set current offering. And then here we'll say equals use state. And you're either going to basically get the purchase offering back. Purchase offering. Uh, why am I not getting this back? Use state. Uh, we were going to get purchase offering back. Or no. Right. And it's going to be initialized with no to begin with. And then we're going to have the same thing for customer info. Okay. So the same two things for customer info and current offering. So two pieces of state right now. And then we're also going to have, um, basically, we're going to check the customer info object eventually to see if their active subscription includes either pro uh, monthly or pro yearly. And the way we do this is we say const is pro member. And obviously you can memoize this if you want to, but I'm just going to show you very simply. We're going to say customer info dot active subscriptions and we're going to use optional chaining here as well to, because that could be no and then we could say if it is yeah. so this is a, a, a few different ways you could do this right you can firstly say if directly into the thing so you can actually go ahead and do like pro here but i'm actually going to make it a little bit easier i'm just going to say if it dot includes and say pro um monthly yeah or and obviously what I would recommend here highly is that you have these in constant files, right? So you have something like a const and different types. So in this case, you could have something like types of membership or yeah, membership. And then here you would have your pro monthly or to say monthly and also yearly. Yeah. So that way you've got like a, a dedicated monthly And why is this freaking out? Cannot find monthly or oh, types of membership, sorry. Dot monthly, yeah. Uh, or if it's type yearly, right? So that way you've got a const. Right, there we go, nice. And now that will tell us if the user is pro or not, basically, right? So if they have an active membership, which is either monthly or yearly, that in revenue cap, okay? So then we're gonna have a use effect now. This is, gonna, this is where we start having the custom hook magic. We're gonna have a dependency array. We're gonna import the use effect like so. And this is where we do our special stuff, okay? So we need to do an asynchronous bit of code. Now, when we need, when we do an asynchronous bit of code inside of a use effect, we have to have wrap it in a function. So we're gonna say const fetch data equals an asynchronous function. Um, and then inside of here, we're gonna say, firstly, we need to enable the debug logs for our purchases. So that way it can tell us more insightful information. So this is the purchase API. And then we're basically gonna, con we're gonna, detect or if we're on an iPhone or if we're on a um, Android. So why, the way we do this is we say, if the platform operating system is Android, configure our purchase API with the Google key, right? If it's um, uh, iOS, then configure with the Apple key, right? And obviously if, you, if this was the case and you're using uh, environment variables at this point, you would say process.env.google API key, process.env.api, Apple API key and so forth, right? Then what we do is we say const, and then we need to basically get all of the offerings, right? Now the offerings, just to make super, super clear, are in revenue cap. Remember we went ahead and we actually set up the offerings. So I need to basically get all of the offerings. So these two offerings, okay? Well, the actual pro off is the offering and then I need to get the packages inside of it. So in this case, I'm gonna say const offerings, offerings equals await, purchases get offerings okay and i'm gonna do the same for the customer info i'm gonna say const customer info equals await dot get purchases get customer info and that's what we want okay so that this will get us the customer information this will get see how you hover it says gets current customer info and here it gets us um offerings and so forth and you can always look at the purchase offerings to detect to detect what type you're getting back. And then you can even look into that and see what kind of stuff you get back and so forth. Like active subscriptions is a string array and so forth, right? So it's just a handy way to do it. And then we need to set that to our current pieces of state. So in this case, set 
current offering to customer uh, to offerings sorry offerings dot current right so in this case current offerings configured in the revenue cat dashboard or you can even show all of them but in this case i just want to show the current ones and then we're going to say set customer info to the customer info like so okay now once that's done we need to execute our fetch data so we're going to say fetch the data and if we have any any issues we're simply going to console log them uh console error them right so that's an easy way of writing uh basically this it's an easy way of just saying that okay so in this case i'm just going to do console.error it saved like so cool so close to 500 likes let's go guys All right that's awesome now that's perfect so far we have no external dependency inside here so we're good then we're gonna have a second use effect All right so in a function with uh, there we go. I'm going to say const. And this is basically going to be a listener now, okay? So what this will do is, is it's going to basically, every time the user's information updates, for example, if they got a, uh, if they subscribe to the pro membership, this should ping off and tell us, right? And it didn't have a detached listener function in case anyone's wondering. So that's what I would typically do here. In the cleanup function of the user effect, I would detach listener, but it didn't have that here. So I was assuming it just did it itself. And you even got one for... Um, I think that's no, it doesn't exist yet. I'm gonna say customer, const customer info updated object equals asynchronous. So I'm gonna create an asynchronous function uh, right here. And I'm gonna go ahead and say purchaser info. So this actually has an argument here. And then we're going to update. So basically, this is a function. And I'll show you how we're, what we're going to do here, right? So this is a function that we're going to attach to a listener right now. So we're going to say, attach it to the purchases dot add customer uh, info update listener. And then what you do is you pass in your function. And what this does is this is essentially getting passed through here. And if you, are, if you don't believe me, you can check here by doing this. And now if we hover over A, you can see A is custom of type customer info. Hence why I've done it here. Okay, so that's basically how you detect the type. So in this case, we got our uh, customer info and then we basically set it with that. So that's basically what's happening. And if you're wondering, it returned nothing. Otherwise, I would have detached it in the cleanup function. Okay, so done. And then we have no dependency management here. That's because there's nothing in there as well. Okay, and then what we want to do is we have all of these things happening behind the scenes now with user effects. So they're going to get updated. It will tell us if the user updates and so forth. Um, and then what I want to do is I want to return these um, objects. So this is our custom um, hook part of it. We're going to return the current offering, the customer info, and his pro member. And what's beautiful about this now is that that, in that hook now, I can call it anywhere inside my app. And it will tell me if the user is a pro member. It will tell me all the revenue cat offerings. And it will tell me the customer's current information, right? So pretty sick, right? So in this case, we're going to go ahead and close that. And now we can start implementing it. So I want to show you right now, if we go to the home screen, let's test this to see if this even works, right? So firstly, I'm going to go over here and then I'm going to just go ahead and close this out. So come on, okay. And now the thing is, right? So this is the point at which we are limited because um, we cannot test the actual purchases with um, a simulator right we will get restricted at some point here so what i will show you is you can there is a setup process where you can activate i think the storefront api or something you can basically set up your simulator in a way with xcode and all that stuff but i'm going to show you how we like i said how to test it on a real device hence why we deployed it to eas right so on the home screen now what i'm going to do is i'm going to pull in our custom hook so i'm going to go ahead and say const custom offering go ahead and pull in our custom hook so just like we have other hooks i have one here and what I'm going to do is I'm simply going to log out current offering to see what happens. So I'm going to say debug current offering, right? And let's see what we see. In this case, there we go. You're trying to use a module that is not supported in Expo Go. You need to create a development build of your app. So that's the problem, right? So in this case now, this is where we need to create a development build. So this is where we move over to the simulator. So oh, I didn't need to stop it there. NPX Expo start. So now what I want you to do is I want to basically close the simulator because that's the end of the journey for the simulator. Okay. Now what we're going to do is we're going to move over to our phone. 
okay and then what we're going to do here is we're going to go to the deployment so this one here so ios internal distribution build this will finish you click install and this is where on the phone now i will show you what we need to do okay so on my phone what i'm now going to do is i'm going to go ahead and scan this code so i'm opening up my camera i go ahead and pop in it says open in itunes and then you can see here it says uh, would like to install revenue cat app youtube okay so i click install and now this is installing it onto my phone okay so i'm now going to go ahead and locate that on my phone so i'm going to go into my photos and right now what i would do is simply just do a little search right so basically pull down um i'm not going to show my search but basically go into your search in your home screen and you pull down and you follow that because i don't want to show in case there's anything there um, and then basically what you'll do is you'll find the app that we just deployed okay so our one is called revenue cat app and that's literally a, an app name right so in this case i've now gone ahead and loaded the app and this is what you'll see right so this is literally an app on my phone now so you can see it's literally an app revenue cat app youtube so you just need to search for that app and you'll find it okay so now at this point you should see we don't have a development server running it's like blank okay how do we do this so this is where it gets really cool right so right now i'm charging the phone again so i'm gonna go ahead and restart my server so in this case i'm gonna go ahead and do uh R to refresh, um, where is it? Fetch development servers. Let me uh, go ahead and actually do expo. Let me go ahead and do this, sorry. Let me do expo start, MPX, sorry, MPX expo start, um, dash dash dev dash dash client or dash dash dev client. Okay. And now what you'll see is this should go ahead and fetch up our app over here so let's just double check oh in fact i don't think i've actually got the um i didn't i think i needed to actually install that uh the provisioning profile i don't think i did it all right so firstly oh 500 likes boom we smashed it amazing stuff guys yeah so at this point i've messed up somewhere so i should have actually installed that okay oh wow and just as that happened the song came on the main song it's so sick hey let's go guys all right so at this point what i want to do is actually i i want to install that provisioning profile that i completely ignored earlier all right oh okay let's do that again so um in this case all right well i've just showed that that's fine one second okay so i need to show that provisioning profile so i'm just gonna find it quickly Okay, so I've installed it. And where the hell was the provisioning profile again? Um, okay, I'll tell you what, I would just do it manually again. I'll show you. So at this point, I want you to go ahead and. Yeah. This song gets me so hyped up. And then we're going to say EAS device create, which I've already done, but we're going to do it again just to show you. Okay, and then we're gonna go yes, yes. Okay, uh, we're gonna say website, yes. I'm gonna register this, which I probably didn't do correctly the first time. That's my honest truth. So I'm gonna go ahead and screenshot, get this. Expo dev, oops. All right, download the profile, allow, profile downloaded. I'm gonna go into my settings right now. I'm gonna go into the profile. So I'm gonna type in into the search bar, uh, profile. And now I'm going to VPN and device management. I see downloaded profile is here, register for development. Go ahead and do that, install, enter my passcode. So let's do that right now. And I'm gonna install it. So now I clicked install, okay? Which I didn't do properly before. And now you can see Expo Dev, your device is ready to run your internal development builds. So that's where I kind of messed up, right? So I kind of, I don't think I did it correctly the first time, right? Now what I'm gonna do is reopen the app that I had opened previously, All right? So in this case, um, oh no, actually, oh, Sunny, I'm so stupid sometimes. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back to my app. Uh, this is so many steps, right? MPX Expo, start. Yeah. And now watch this. 
So that QR code that popped up, now all we need to do is scan it. Oh, so stupid, right? So scan it. And then this will pop up on our phone here. So once you're on this screen, I need you to go ahead and type a click on the development build and it'll say open in revenue cat app YouTube. Yes. And then you want to click on allow and you want to click on reload. And just like that, well, hey, look at that. Now it says, hello there, friend, blah, blah, blah. Right. And then you can shake to get to this. Right. So if I shake my phone now. So basically, look, I look like a crazy man. But look, if I basically, I'm on my phone right now. So this is actually the, the app that we built right now. So you see, I can do all the things we did previously. I know it's not focused, it's super annoying. Right, so in this case, I can do all the stuff we were doing previously. If I click on the top bit over here, so I'm just trying to show you. And if I talk over there, there you go, you get even the pop-up and all sorts, yeah? But now, if I go ahead and shake it. Okay, shake it. Yeah, there you go. Then it pops up with the, the debug menu. Okay, so that's how you access the debug menu on this on the, this bit. So you just shake the phone. Okay. Now once you're on here, I want you to click on remote JS debugger. All right. So remote JavaScript debugger. And you see what happened. The minute I clicked it, it opened up a React Native debugger on my computer. And what you'll find is now I've got the debug logs on my computer. So if I inspect this screen by doing um, inspect, now you can see I've got my debug. Remember the one that I showed you? And I can see, yes, we can see it. Monthly, annual, let's go, let's go. It's working, All right? So this is exactly what I wanted to see. All right, so in that case, yeah, so that's what you had to do. I'm so sorry I messed that up. You just had to scan the bloody QR code. This is stupid. Whenever you see a QR code, just scan the thing, right? It makes it, it helps you out, All right? um but yeah there you go so now we have it on our phone so this is and by the way guys i promise you something crazy yeah? i'm gonna show you something and this is what the, what i initially thought wait that actually works so check this out if i go to my um basically i just want to add in a bit of text here just to prove something to you yeah? so use text and just say hello world right i'm gonna pop it in so if i hit save uh, it rebuilt my app there you go weirdly um, it wouldn't have to do that every time, by the way. Say hello world, one, two, three, save. Okay, maybe because I'm streaming, I guess it's doing that, but it, it won't. It doesn't always do that, right? But in this case, if I hit save now, I want to show you something. That's Remember, that's streaming from my phone, right? So I'm going to remove that text block and show you right now. So I'm going to remove it. I'm removing it and I'm hitting save. That's crazy. That is crazy. That just streamed to my phone. Right? And if I undo it, and I hit save. Like that's nuts. And I and I'm stressing the point because I just find that absolutely crazy how that works, right? But yeah, so now you know basically what's happening. Right? So uh let's hit 600 likes. Um but yeah, so now we've got the the connection to our backend ready, right? So absolutely crazy. So it will literally stream it over your network to your development build. So that's what you need to do at this point, right? And now the awesome part is if you need to debug it, we have our debug logs here. So I can go ahead and cancel this. And remember, you can't click this because I'm streaming it. And by the way, if you want to see it on your computer, I'm using something called Reflector 4 um, to airplay to my phone. But as in right now, honestly, when you're developing, you can just have your phone in front of you. Okay, so now let's go ahead and test this. What I'm going to do is you're going to see me interact with the phone as well. But if I need to send a refresh command, I go to my terminal and I simply put press R. So to R to refresh and I can actually refresh the app. Right, and you can see it says debug logs. So in this case, I had a debug in the home screen which showed the current offering, right? And that's what you see here. And this is what I get back. So I get the annual membership. I get all of this good stuff, available packages and all that kind of stuff. Okay. So this is really, really awesome right now. Right. So now we're going to go ahead and take this knowledge. I'm going to put my song on because I like that song so much. Where is it? We're going so well, guys. I'm actually so like, this is going sick. Okay. So the next thing is let's actually make this thing work. Okay. So we're going to go to... Um, oh yeah, so, uh, let me get my code up. There we are. So now we're going to basically use 
the is pro member to determine if the user is actually a pro member or not. Okay. So we're going to go here. We're going to go ahead and say, uh, we don't actually care about the rest of these. We just is pro member for now. Uh, we're going to go down and basically first things first is at the top over here. If they're a pro member, I want it to say, um, <coughs> um, pro. Okay. So here I can say is pro member. Then they're going to basically say pro. Otherwise it's going to say upgrade. Okay, so I really don't know why it's doing that, yeah. Um, but as in, it's fine. It's just gonna do that a bit, right? But in this case, we now I've got upgrade. So if I click it, you can see on my phone it pops up. So I'm not clicking it. Sorry, I'm pressing it on my actual like I'm actually pressing the app, right? So now you can see it says uh, upgrade because I'm not pro. Okay. Now the same applies to here. So where we've got requires pro. All right. So requires pro is actually we can do inside of here. So we go to action row. So let's hop over to action row. Now I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to pull through my um, here. And to be fair, we can just import what we need here. So, and then we can, and then we don't need the rest of these just inside this file. We just need the S pro. That's all we care about right now. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to conditionally render some styling now. So first things first, I'm going to go ahead and say, um, we're going to have a little extra variable here saying locked for pro members is equal to if it requires pro and if they're not a pro member. So this means that if the prop that we pass through, so basically I'm saying if I passed a prop saying it required pro, then it would go ahead and lock it. And if they're not a pro member, so if it requires pro and you're not a pro basically, then it should disable. So this will be true at that point if it's locked. Yeah. So now, oh God, that's so annoying. I don't know why it's doing that. Yeah. But anyway, we'll work for it. Okay. So once that happens, then what we can do is we can basically say the, um, <coughs> over here, we can say the background color, if it's locked for pro members, the background color is going to be gray. Otherwise it will be the color that we specified. So I'll let that do a little weird refresh. And now you can see, boom, we get this add an exercise. That's all good, right? Everything looks good. And in fact, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to save it when I'm ready, right? So uh, that way we don't get this weird spasm thing, right? And then I'm going to have locked for pro members and only show the following um, like so. And then we're going to say, and I'm going to just pop in what I would show here. So I'm just going to have a nice little lock on the screen as well. Yeah, so after this, you see now we've got the pro little lock nicely added in. And that's only, and that's going to be absolutely positioned in the top right if it's, uh, if locked pro is there. Um, <clears throat> there are many technical words to learn. Yeah, I know it gets a little bit confusing. I'm, I apologize. It's just quite a big build. That's the truth. Um, yes, Moby, I prepare it beforehand, then I do it live. Yeah. So in this case, I'm going to also disable, I think I disable. Yeah, okay. So in this case, we're going to say, that these buttons, for example, right now, if I press the button, you shouldn't do that, right? It shouldn't say this. It should instead take me to the paywall. So the way that I do that is I go to here and I basically say, okay, if it's locked for pro members, then I wanna go ahead and basically navigate to the paywall instead. So I'm gonna navigate to the paywall, else I'm gonna navigate to the screen, right? So basically this, right? So in this case here, so we're saying navigation to navigate paywall, otherwise navigate to the screen. Okay, so let's go over here. There we go, just gonna change the song a bit. So now what will happen is, if any of the colored ones, hey, you have access, hey, you have access, hey, you have access, and if I go to a pro one, whoa, you need to upgrade, right? So it blocks us now because the navigation is going straight to paywall if you're not a pro member. And you see how that works, right? So it's so actually a really nice way of dealing with it and it does exactly what we wanted, okay? My iPad is freaking out right now, so I'm just gonna try and get the music back. I think we're good in terms of, yeah, we're all good, yeah, awesome. Almost at 600 likes, guys, smash the like button, we're doing amazing today. All right, let me get the music back. Give me my music. All right, there we go. Okay, so at this point, now we need to go ahead and actually implement um, the, basically the bottom bit, right? So where the hell are my designs? Where are my designs at? There we are. Yeah, so I want to implement these two things. This, the start of one week trial and the 46% annually and the restore purchases. Now, the annoying thing is, is where the heck is the trial, right? Uh, I, I have done the trial uh, before. I'm trying to remember where I put the trial. Um, so 
We will get. We will find it. I promise you. We will find it. I th- it has to be an App Store Connect, right? So let's go find it. So App Store Connect. Um, switch on greatest downloads. Okay, it was such a small setting. I remember finding it. It was Pro Monthly. I'm sure it was here. And then it was. Can't be saying without music. Um, I can turn the music down. Uh, so see if you guys can find it before me yeah um where was it was there, there's a free trial option that i cannot find there's a free trial option that i cannot find for app store connect right so in this case uh if i go back to subscriptions i believe it was in uh, so in that purchases I'm going to see it on my other project if I have it. So this is my other project right here. I've got here. So in this case, this is the other one. I changed the setting and for the life of me, I cannot find it. Um, I believe it was. Pricing and availability. Nope, it's none of these in-app purchases. I didn't add an in-app purchase in this one. And here. I had it ready. I don't know why I've completely forgotten it. I literally did it like before I came on this live as well. And I and I found it and I've completely lost trail of thought as to where I put it. Um Right, so Jay sent over an article. I'm just going to try and find it quickly. Right, so in this case, we have... Um, no, that seems to be the old one, Jay, I think. Yeah, that's not going to work for this one. Um, so let's go back. In-app purchases. No, it wasn't here. No, okay, so we'll find it. We'll find it afterwards even. It might have been no, so it wasn't here as well. I'm gonna have to find it. So no. Nope. It was so small and I remember being like, what the hell? How are you supposed to find that? Um non-renewing okay no so it's fine let's let's build out the other the the part where we can still sign up that's fine i can show you how to do it uh, and then i will implement the remind me at the end i will implement it um right so let's go ahead and do this now so i'm gonna go ahead and implement the rest of it so the actual sign up stuff so in the upgrade screen so the paywall we're gonna go to the paywall and now I will show you. So I'm going to need my current offering that we had previously. So here. This one. And then I need the current offering. I don't care about the others in this case. Now for the current offering. Um, Asian CK says, this is the most relatable programming experience. Here. Honestly, that's why I do it live. Because it's so... It's such rubbish when I see a tutorial and it's like everything's super perfect. This is not how it happens, right? It is, this stuff goes wrong. Um, okay, so in this case, let's go to um, my current offering. Yeah, what am I doing? Um, so we're going to have... Firstly, current offering may take some time to load, okay? So in which case, I'm actually going to say if there is no current offering, then what I want to do is I actually want to return a loading indicator before we actually render anything. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to say, um, oops, return, and I'm going to import activity indicator from React Native. And this is basically going to go ahead and show a loader. So now if I go here, um, oh, oops. So I'm going to press it. I'm going to press it, uh, upgrade. And now you can see we've got a nice activity loader until the current offers are loaded, right? Because it will take a little bit of time for that to happen. Okay, so next thing that we need to do 
is uh, Rodrigo says something. Restart the iPhone emulator to me. So remember, this isn't an emulator. This is a reflector. Or and I don't want to do that because when I do that, I've had it basically just completely break on me, and I don't want to do it on stream because um, I have to restream it, and it didn't connect last time again. It's very strange, but yeah, it's annoying. Um, so now what we're going to do is we're going to say uh, I'm going to firstly have a monthly purchase button, okay? And here, what we're going to have is a touchable opacity button underneath everything. So here, monthly subscribe, we're going to have a touchable opacity, yep, like so. And in this button, I'm going to have a two pieces of text. So one uh, saying sign up. And the same thing again, and we're just going to change it up. So basically, I need the price, right? So I actually need the in, uh, the actual price. So uh, I want it to basically say free trial for one week, blah, blah, blah. And then I want it to say the actual price afterwards. So I'm going to say current offering dot monthly. So you see how we can get, we can actually access it. The product itself, price string. So this will actually give me the price forward slash per month as it's a monthly month after. Now, the reason why I'm doing this is if I show you, it will say free trial for one week, 20 dirhams month after. Okay, that's nice. Let's go ahead and do that right now. So let's style this up. So what I'm actually going to do, I'm going to pop the styling in. So I'm going to apply the styles. I've already explained a bunch of style, like what we're doing. We're giving it a bunch of styling here. I'm going to give this one some text white. Yeah, so text white and then for the touchable opacity i'm going to go ahead and give it the following styles so i'm going to give it a nice little button style so let's go ahead and pop this one here hit save and now we've got a nice little button at the bottom okay and we basically want to handle the purchase of this right so right now we don't have the free trial implemented i will do that but if i was to click this right now it doesn't do anything if i do on press i want to do a handle monthly monthly purchase and i'm going to have two very similar functions here which you can go ahead and feel free to actually refactor yourself and make it your own like you know neater version um because you can actually do that quite easily after this yep. so we're going to go ahead and say const handle monthly purchase and it's going to be an asynchronous function yeah and then here what we're going to do is we're going to say if there is no current offer or if there's no monthly offer then we're going to simply return Right. And there again, when we optional chain is because it could be no, which is why we're protecting ourselves. And then what I'm going to say is I'm going to say purchase info. So basically, this is where we carry out the execution or the pur purchasing part. I say await purchases. So await purchases, purchases. And we import that from React Native. Yeah. And then we say dot purchase package. And in this case, what we do is we pass in the monthly package, right? Oops, sorry, guys. Completely messed up. Yeah. Handle monthly purchase. We pass in the monthly package. And what this is going to do, it's going to tell Revenue Cat that, hang on, you want to basically go ahead and purchase this package. Okay. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a debug here saying you bought the um basically uh, you bought one second what have i done here purchase info um yeah there we go purchase uh and we'll just say monthly sub purchased yeah just like that okay and um what i'm gonna do is you know what i'm gonna maybe okay it's fine keep it there. i'll just won't save yeah we'll say and then i'm gonna basically gonna say an alert right so if you're active afterwards so if you've got a subscription and it all went well we're gonna say if purchaser basically the the customer's information right so in this case purchaser info would be the customer's information that is returned if their customer entitlements active pro basically entitlements remember basically okay so that's very important actually remember we did have entitlements which was levels of access right and we included in that pro monthly and pro yearly right so in this case pro monthly will be uh, active right but i actually want to double check this to be sure of something i want to go ahead and see what the console log will return but let's go ahead and do dot pro because the identifier for our annual was, I believe it was here. So let's go ahead and see. So entitlements. 
So I called it, oh bloody hell, I called it Pro Monthly, okay. So let's delete this one. Let's just get rid of this delete entitlement. Yeah, so forget that. This, we actually want Pro instead. It should be Pro. Pro Access. Yeah, and the hope, okay, this makes so much sense now. This is how we actually get the entitlement to use the thing. Okay, so in this case, now what we can do is we can attach the entitlement of pro monthly and pro yearly, and then we can check against that in the actual thing. Okay, that makes sense now. All right, pro yearly. All right, so at this point, that's good. Um, and now we can do dot pro, that's fine. Yeah, so, oh, sorry. So I just want to show one more. Then, if if you've got the pro entitlement, which, which will you will have because you purchased the monthly, okay? Then we're going to say navigation go back. So it should close it afterwards. And then what's amazing is that because the users will then become pro, our listener should then fire off, and then it should work in the way that we expect it, right? Because then this will say is pro, uh, and it will basically allow us through access, and that will also say pro after we've successfully done it. So let's go ahead and say handle monthly purchase. Let's go ahead. And attach that to the correct thing handle monthly purchase okay and let's try this out all right so i'm going to go ahead and do the, give this a go so i'm going to click on add an exercise and boom we get that which is great that's what we wanted and then i'm going to click on free trial for one as in we haven't got the free trial yet but i'm going to click it so i've pressed the button and let's see what happened did i press it yeah okay there we go okay so that's good that's a very good sign and then you see the accounts popped up and then we can click on subscribe. And also, by the way, in your settings, it will say sandbox account. You would put the test sandbox user that you set up in uh, App Store Connect previously. Put that in, which is why I'm seeing Sunny Sanger Plus test at gmail.com, right? So that's the name. And then you want to put in the passcode that you set for that test user. So I'm going to pop that in right now. So I'm doing that just now as we speak. And then I'm going to go ahead and hit sign in. Okay, so I'm signing in. And now if all has done well, what we should see is my purchase has gone through. Now it should say purchase is complete in a second. Okay, so give it a second. Obviously, this is a sandbox. It's going to take a little bit of time. And then what we should see is that this will navigation go back should kick in. And then it should say, oh, there we go. We're pro. Amazing. Look at that. We said pro. And now we have a pro membership. Hey, look at that. We have a pro membership. And just to prove to you that that actually worked, right? I'm going to go over to my revenue cat now. So let's go to overview. And we are in the correct project, I believe. Yeah, we are in YouTube revenue cat demo. Yeah, so click into that project and then click on uh, overview sandbox data and basically bear in mind guys this has all of my other projects in but the one that we want to pay attention is pro monthly that's the one we just set up pro monthly and pro yearly are the ones that we set up okay and then um okay and then what we're going to do is you see where we've got pro monthly we're going to click that and as you can see it's going to show that I subscribed to Pro Monthly for 1999 Durham's, which was correct. Yeah. And uh, by the way, it's showing total spend zero because one, we're in sandbox, and two, because it's in a different currency. You can test that and I will show you if you did USD, right? So now what you can do is you can go ahead and see the user in here, right? So, and this is again, another really amazing reason to use, rev to use Revenue Cat. It shows when they first saw the app, it first shows when they opened the app and it sto first shows when they started the subscription. Whoa, thank you, Abo Adamo. Papa Fam member just donated $10. Dude, I appreciate you, man. Thank you so much. That's what the Papa Fam's about. I, I love you, man. Thank you, dude. All right, I, I appreciate you being here, man. Right, so one thing you'll find as well is that your subscriptions in sandbox mode, I think it's every five minutes, will renew monthly. Right, so every minute or so it renews monthly. So that way you can test everything out. Otherwise, obviously you're not gonna wait an entire month, right? That's why you can see pro, 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 because it's basically gonna renew. And if we click here, indicates this, it was a renewal subscription. It was a subscription renewal. No, so that's not the renewal yet. These are all renewals, all right? So in that case, there we go. We can see it. And obviously, as I mentioned before, it's, it's, it's because one, we're in test, and two, we're, we're doing Durham's, not US, right? If you were charging US, you would see US dollars. Okay, so that's great. We're working. Now, how do we test this and actually get to the point where I want to deactivate my pro again, right? So my pro subscription. Well, I'm going to show you right now. 
Well, basically all you need to do is go to delete user, go ahead and confirm. And then what we can do is restart the server. So in this case, if I restart my app, what you'll see is that we're locked out. Okay. Now what you should see, Pedro, what is up? Gone Calvez, it's good to see you, dude. Now, as you can see, if I click it, I'm no longer a pro member because I deleted it, right? But really what you want to do is, if I was to go into my app right now and click restore purchases, which we were going to implement, I would be able to actually restore it because technically on Apple, my sandbox user has still got access to it. But if you really want to do it correctly, so if I was to go ahead and press free trial, so I press free trial again, you'll see that it's going to basically tell me that I'm already subscribed. Yeah, you see that? I'm already subscribed, right? And the reason being is, is because unless I go to my sandbox testers and I go to edit and I clear purchase history, now you've basically reset that test user, okay? So now what we gotta do is, if we wanna test this out properly, so you see it just restored my purchase for me. So in this case, yeah, it's restored it again. So now it's basically gone to revenue cap, so basically what you have to do in, in tandem is delete the clear purchase history here, go to your revenue cap and delete the user from here. So go to overview, sandbox, go to this user and delete them. So go to your user and basically remove them. And that's how you do a full test, right? And now if we refresh, so R to refresh, you'll see that now this one should, yeah, there we go right? It gets deactivated. And then if we do it now, upgrade, cool. And obviously you can handle it. You can put a loader in at that point, right? So you can have a splash screen while it's doing that. I'm just showing you obviously without any of that stuff. If I now click it, you'll see it will offer me the opportunity to upgrade. Right? And I think Jay actually found what I was looking for. Yeah, there we go. Perfect. That's amazing, right? So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add the annual. Let's go ahead and get the annual in. Um, so let's go ahead and do this now. So the annual subscribe. Right, so I'm going to do the same thing for annual subscribe. And to be honest with you, what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to pop in the snippet of code for the styling. Um, so actually, no, I'll do it properly. I'll show you fully. So we'll say uh, for annual, I'm only going to include annual if annual actually existed. So we'll say if current offering dot annual exists, then we'll basically have a touchable opacity. So a touchable opacity. Okay, and then inside of here, I'm going to have a piece of text saying something per year. Okay, so this is going to be the price string. Okay, that's so annoying. But anyway, we got there. Yeah, then we're going to have the price string. Uh, and then I'm going to basically have a nice little formula to help you out here. So what I'm actually doing here is I'm showing you how much you save if you sign up annually. And I'll show you how I've done it. It's a little formula. And basically what I've said here is I've said save. Um, this much percent annually. And all I've done here is a little formula where I'm basically calculating the percentage of if you were to pay monthly for 12 months, uh, the difference, basically how much percent would you save if you simply paid a uh, annual, right? So this is a simple mathematical formula. We're doing one minus the difference here. Uh, and then I uh, times it by 100 to get the percent. And I just do it to precision two to give me a two decimal, um, a two character. So I never went to go over 100%, for example, right? Then I hit save and check this out okay now you can see save 46 percent annually right so that's nice so now we're saving 46 to be able to do that okay so now what i'm going to do is add in the styling so let's go ahead and do that right now i'm going to add in the touchable opacity styling last name there we go beautiful and then i'm also while we're here i'm going to add in a touchable uh, restore purchases button Right, so I'm going to obviously implement this, but again, the actual UI part of it is going to be here. Right, so for this bit, I'm going to have an on press for handle annual purchases. So I need to create my restore purchases and handle annual purchases. And I'll show you the difference between the two and how we're going to implement them. So going back up now, let's create our handle annual. And the handle annual is honestly the exact same in many ways, except we're basically changing the annual. So obviously you can see there's a room to refactor here. I'm not going to go through it all, but you can definitely refactor it here and say, if it's monthly, handle it this way. If it's annual, do it this way. So we're simply going to go into here and we're going to change the monthly, monthly, monthly to annual. Okay. 
And in this case, the entitlement would still be the same because annual and uh, monthly still get the entitlement of pro. Okay. And, um, and then, yeah, so in that case, now we should see the annual. So once I hit save, we're going to get a little flickery weirdness and then restore purchases. Okay. So I forgot to do that. Um, so let me move this over here. So restore purchases is going to be the last one. And the restore purchases actually, believe it or not, a lot easier than you think. Restore purchases. And this, for example, is perfect for let's imagine i pay for my monthly subscription but i got a new phone and i downloaded the app and for some reason it doesn't think i'm a pro member and that that's happened in a lot of cases i guarantee you it's happened with me a lot of the time when i've gone onto a new device and i'm like well hang on a minute i pay for pro why am i not a pro member and uh, that's simply because it hasn't done a little fetch to the back end or to app store connect or google play to say uh, is this person actually paying a subscription to us or not um, so in that case, you just have to restore purchase. It restores that connection and then it knows that you're still a pro member. So I'll show you how we do that right now. We simply have an asynchronous function. And again, all of this is made this simple because of revenue cat. So it is actually really nice, nicely done. We'll say info equals, uh, and it is going to be restore. It's not restore transactions. It's restore purchases. Okay. And then what we do is we're going to do a simple check and we're going to allow on the screen. We're going to say if your active subscriptions dot length was actually greater than zero then then you definitely did you were subscribed before and it's going to say you're now restored but if it wasn't and you wasn't actually you know you didn't pay for anything before and you just try to click restore then it will actually catch you and it'll say no purchases to restore and what we're going to do is we're going to carry in the alert from react native which is just a simple pop-up right so that's just like an easy lazy way of doing it okay so now if I go into upgrade, so in the top right, upgrade. Now you can see we've got the restore purchases and we've got that. So in this case now, I'm going to go ahead and do annual and I'll show you how we can test. So firstly, we're going to test the annual membership. We already tested monthly, it works, but we're going to do the free trial afterwards. But we're going to try the annual membership and then we're going to basically, I'm going to show you how we test the disconnection. So imagine you went onto a new phone and then we can restore the purchase. Okay, so get ready for this. And do, remember, we're going to smash the 550 like mark in just a second. So just keep going strong, guys. All right, so I'm going to click on save 46% annually and the price. So I'm pressing it now. And you can see, boom, we get the price for the year pop up. I'm going to go ahead and do that right now. So I'm going to go ahead and buy this on my sandbox account so i'm doing it right now so i'm popping it in like so sign in and in just a second boom hey, hey, hey. right that's good and then it will process it in the app store and this will go ahead and give us our pro entitlement which will then get detected which means that we will now see our pro right awesome stuff that also reminds me right so firstly that worked amazing stuff so you have now have access to those features but it also reminds me that in our actual code we could have probably also done just in hindsight in the use revenue cap to detect if the user was a pro um, just as a fyi you could probably go ahead and also do entitlements here and do active.pro right so this is probably a cleaner way of doing it yeah so if we were to go ahead and refactor this right now Let's see if that works. Yeah, so you see, that's actually a lot cleaner. So that's exactly the way we need to do it. So I hope this makes sense now. The entitlement is grouped under, so that way once you're a pro member, you can you basically include the products that are offered in there. And then your offering is your paywall, right? Makes sense, okay. So now it works, right? If everything works the way I expect it to do. But what if I go onto a new device and you know, for some reason it doesn't detect that I've done it. So the way you can test this, by the way, is you go into your sandbox there, you go into your user profile in revenue cat, not in app store connect. So according to Apple now, this user is a fully paid member. He's paying monthly. Um, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete the user on revenue cat. Okay. And I'll show you what happens. So I'm going to delete him on revenue cat. And now what we should see, I'm just going to quickly restart this up. So refresh. Now what you'll see is that this user no longer has their pro membership, right? But hang on a minute, I've paid my pro membership. And according to Apple, I am paying a bloody monthly subscription, which I should be enabled for. So I click it and now I go down to bottom and I click on uh, purchase, uh, what's it called? I go down to the payroll and I'm basically going to click on the restore purchases, which is going to do that. So right now I'm pressing on restore purchase under the annual button. So I'm pressing over here, right? So I'm pressing restore purchases. And now you can see your purchases have been restored. Okay. 
And then what we will find is I can go ahead and swipe down and now I'm still a pro member. Right, so I need. I think at this point you could have just had navigation go back after this. So we could potentially just go ahead and pop it in afterwards uh, for restore purchases like so. Again, same thing. Um, entitlements. Yeah, but you could you could do that basically, right? Um, and that will give you the same thing. Okay, and then that will basically rather than me having to manually swipe down, it'll work. So I hope that bloody helped. That was that's actually really cool. I like how that works, right? So now we've got our pro membership. So I'm just clicked on pro just to show you. I've left that as an option so I can demo it. But you've got the free week, the annual, the restore purchases, amazing stuff. If I was to try and go ahead and do this, it would go ahead and tell me that I'm already subscribed or I'm already doing this thing. So why am I doing it again? Um, why has my music again gone off? God damn it. Yeah. And the iPad is not doing me today, right? Um so at this point now i want to do the free trial so that's the final step is the free trial right this has been a banger of a build right let's go ahead and get the free trial in so we're gonna go to the app store yeah so reality is so revenue cap okay so youtube demo app this is the one All right now i want a free trial so i'm gonna go to and i think jay actually found a nice little article which i'm just gonna go ahead and see Okay, so what we can do now is we can go into in this one, sorry. We can go into select our app in the sidebar, in app purchases, and we should click manage. So I, I don't think it's here though. That's the thing. It was, it's not this one. I know that I've been here before. Um, I'm trying to find it. So in this case, all right, this is the one we're going to do. You know, let's debug it together. Screw it. I'm actually going to show you how I, I would find it. All right. So instrument introductory offers. So the introductory offers that we're looking for right now are here. So no. So it's basically, I'm just literally trying to find where the hell I put it because it's not here. It's um, app store introductory for free trial app store connect we need seven days free trial you know see it <laughs> okay so oh thank you byte bound let me check that so byte bound says it's in my apps features my apps feature why am i looking features where am i going so like okay so subscriptions i'm in subscriptions subscription pricing Oh, you know what? You're, I think you're right, actually. So we're going to monthly. I think it is in here. Yes, dude. Thank you, Vibeband. That's what I'm talking about. It's there. I was wondering it. I knew it. I knew it. Was, yeah, because basically I did it in here as well. So I'll show you. In pro monthly. I was thinking, I was like, where is this? Thank you so much, dude. That was actually bugging me so much. All right, introductory offers. There you go. Bam free for the first week right so in this case this is the youtube app demo oh man you're, you're that is the mvp right there all right set up the introductory offer and in this case we've got all of the uh this is why i love live streams honestly it's so exciting <laughs> we can solve it together all right so in this case we are going to enable it for everyone click next the start date we're actually going to go ahead and say like it's today and the end date is no end date right we're just going to have this ongoing free trial offer right so in this case click next and we're going to say um uh, free trade though, I'm going to charge pay as you go, pay up front or type of introductory. It's going to be a free introductory offer, free for three days, one week, two week, and so forth. So I'm going to say free for a week, right? Free for the first week. Next. And then there you go, it's free for the first week. Confirm. And now this will actually have a free um, offer inside, right? And basically, what's amazing about this is that Revenue Cat would simply pass this through the offering uh, object that we've already hooked up. Okay, so now if I show you the, um, if I was to refresh the app, I'm just going to show you if I console log the paywall, so console log the current offering, right? I'm going to basically move this and boom, uh, I'm going to press on pro and we should see in here in a second current offering. Where is it? Uh, okay, sorry. 
Yeah. Yeah. So current offering, we can see here in the debugger. Remember, you have to shake the phone, enable remote debugger in order to get that up. And then here we can see monthly offering type product intro price intro um, discounts pro monthly. Okay, so in this case, because I've already got it, it's not going to show me an intro price. However, uh, is it here actually? I don't think it is here. I think it's um, in this one, maybe product discounts. Okay, I'll tell you what we'll do. In that case, I'm going to restart my, basically I'm going to assume my uh, user actually never got that price because remember they've already signed up, which means they won't get the price again. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a, a refresh of that user. So we're going to assume they cl clear their purchase history. We're going to remove them. And obviously you should only do this when you're testing, right? Like uh, don't do this for live users because you're literally going to wipe your live user off the, off your apps and mess up everything pro yearly. And then we're going to click on ba -ba -ba, delete, confirm. Conf there we go. Yep. And now, okay. Yeah. Uh, and now if I go back to my app, where's the phone? Oh, yeah, yeah. If I refresh, we shouldn't be pro. Okay. So I didn't delete the right user or delete the wrong user. Okay. So this is where it gets a bit annoying. So what you should really ideally have is a separate account for every single project. That's what they recommend. Otherwise you get this headache where your users are merged. Um, so in this case, we've got the pro user here. Uh, my clear purchase history. Um, okay. And now let's go back here. Refresh. Okay, there we go. Okay, so in this case now, I want to go ahead and see the log and I want to press upgrade. And then once that's happened, annual, monthly, product, intro price. Um, okay, so did I add it for... Okay, that's interesting. I think I might have added it for the wrong bloody thing. Let's see. Uh, apps, YouTube app store bill, free for the first week. Cool. Subscription pricing. Go back. Pro monthly. Did I save it or not? Okay, so this is pro monthly. Fine. It could simply be cached, I think, maybe. I don't know. Um, let's do free for the first Jan 26th to no end date free for the first week cool and i want to show you how i actually find it so in side of yeah so it is intro price it's in the intro price yeah so we should see an intro price so the last final leg of debugging and then we are literally golden okay so let's go into uh, thank you so much for the kind words, guys. Um, let's go to paywall. Uh, and let's go to the bottom. And I want to show you something quickly. Um, I think also I'm showing the wrong thing. Yeah. So let's go down to here where we have the button. So free trial for one week. I'll show you the actual code that we use. So I'm going to say start a something for. So in this case, what you do is you say start a current offering monthly product. Oops. Come on. Start a monthly product intro price number of units. So like one times. So I've got X space week free trial. So in, in this formula, it would say like start a one uh, or it would be a start a three day, three times day free trial or so forth. Right. So in this case, this works. James, what's up? He goes, yeah, I made the last up. Let's go. Good to see Pop Fam OG members in the house, guys. I'm going to click on uh, upgrade and let's see. I'm not sure why it's not pulling through. Start a X free trial. So we're not, we're simply not getting it passed through, which is a bit strange right now, which we just need to debug and figure out what the hell is happening. Um, apps. I am in the correct app. Subscriptions. Pro subscription. 
I have a feeling it's like not cashed or something or it's, it's cashing or I don't know some weirdness is happening um because the introductory offer is right there I see it unless I've completely added it into yeah it's not like I can add it like a day before or anything that's fine Okay, um, do, 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 do. offer code promotion offers no introductory offer. It's definitely introductory offer. Let's go back to our uh, account or let's go back to the project. So YouTube revenue cat demo. Yep, and then we've got the entitlements offering products. So pro monthly. Pro monthly and the thing is as well even in here it would be pro monthly I think what's happened is let me delete this product for a second and reattach the product so now let's go ahead and create a new product called pro monthly create product I have a feeling what's happened is it's it's not pulled the latest thing in like the latest edition in. So let's add in the addition. No, go back. Add in a new entitlement. So if you've got pro monthly, you have access to pro entitlements. That's what we want. And then in the offerings, we've got the packages. And monthly is going to be connected to our pro monthly. Oh, amazing stuff, James. Love the new site, T-Way to Sign Team. Thank you so much. We try super hard, dude. He's talking about the Papa Fam new community website. It's absolutely awesome. So make sure you guys, if you want to join a zero to four site hero, check out link in the description, join us. All right. So now I think that would have re pulled it back in. Okay. So now if we try to basically go ahead, we just, dis we basically did a hard disconnect here and then let's do a refresh. Okay. Uh, ignore that. That's fine for now. We haven't got a splash screen. So add an exercise. Yes. That's exactly it. Oh my God. We actually figured it out. <laughs> Let's go. All right. So basically what had happened is Revenue Cat hadn't yet refetched the new introductory offer that I had added in. Okay. So that was the issue. Um, and then, um, yeah, basically by removing the product and re-adding the product, to be honest with you, I think it would have refetched after a amount of time, but I didn't want to be uh, it did it it did refetch for me when i did it myself but um, i didn't want to wait because we're live right now but yeah that's actually incredible so i think with that guys we're actually done oh my god that was an incredible three hour build let's go ahead and go through all of the things that we've done in the today's build so i'm going to show you right now and just to let you know james this is running on a real device right now in front of you so i am demoing on a device right now that you can see um, oh no, why is this cutting out? It's so annoying. I really want to listen to some bloody music. What is going on? Okay, that's so like sleepy feelings. Right, I'm going to try and get something playing because it's super annoying. All right. Okay, there we go. That's good. Okay. <laughs> Would have worked without refresh, without deleting it. Yeah, I know. It would have probably worked. It would have, it definitely would have worked, right? It would have refreshed. Um, or is there a refresh button? Am I being so silly right now? Oh my God. I think there is a refresh button. I think I know what you're talking about. Pro monthly. No, okay, so it's not, right? Anyway, it would have refreshed. After a certain point, it definitely would have refreshed, right? Um, but okay, on that note, yeah, so basically what we went ahead and built today was an awesome application with, um, I taught you so many different elements today. I taught you the EAS app service, how to go ahead and deploy development builds internally and then test them on real devices and actually have this connected to your live developer environment, which is nuts. We connected, uh, we created our first in-app subscription on App Store Connect. <clears throat> we then went ahead and connected it to Revenue Cap. We've got certain screens which are basically allowed for all users. And then we've got the some screens which are behind the paywall. So in case I tried to create a new routine, it will go ahead and say, whoa, 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 you need to upgrade. And then we can go ahead and do annual. We can restore our purchases if we have done before. Or we can start a free trial, which I'm going to go ahead and show you right now because we've actually confidently gone ahead and implemented that. So now 
this will go ahead and actually pop up and notice how I didn't have to change anything, right? So this is the reason why I didn't get the free trial is because I didn't correctly wipe my user. Uh, I'll show you how we actually do this. Um, so to test this properly, I want to, because I want to show you this actually in a full test fashion. So let's go back to, yeah, and let's go to our overview. And I need to basically completely clear that customer. So clear customer, purchase history. Thank you, Bytebound. James says, I will be watching the replay. I hope so, dude, amazing stuff. Let's go ahead and say sandbox data. And these are all renewals anyway. So in that case, let's go ahead and try this again. So I'm gonna, Ah, to refresh. Okay, so ignore the splash screen, that's fine. Let's go ahead and try now. I have a feeling it's just simple, it's, it's quite a simple reason to be honest. It's because it's, it's it's got me a little bit confused in, in a weird state right now where I've got my, so I'm gonna go ahead and enable this and then I'm gonna cancel my user entirely and then we can try again. But basically, in the beginning of the video, I did show you how this does work. In, uh, because right now we're trying to provide this test scenario in the perfect way. Probably messed up one little step here. So in that case, I'm done. It's gone ahead and that will go ahead and upgrade me. If I show you here. So let that go down. So now I am a pro, that's fine. And then you can see now I've got a pro membership. So if we go ahead and do pro, this is a pro monthly membership. So if we go to sandbox data, we should see a pro monthly. There we go. All right, there we are. So that's why it was there. So I need to cancel both of these users. All right. So in this case, and remember, obviously, what you would really want to check is that if they're if they're an annual customer, don't show them the bloody buy button for the the, the other one, right? Obviously, I haven't I haven't covered all the corner cases, but that's just common sense. You wouldn't show the upgrade option again, like once you've got annual. Um, and then also here, I'm going to delete this user. So basically, I'm deleting all the user states where uh, I've signed up. So now, if I go here, there's no user. I was in there. Oh, there. That's a completely different app. But I've done that. And then here, I go to clear purchase history. Cool. So now I've basically said to Apple that this guy is not built uh, like bought at all and I've cut him off from revenue cap. In which case now you can see we've we've lost our pro. We click on add an exercise for pro. And now if I click start a one week free trial, we should get an introductory offer for new as we're a new member technically. Um, you currently subscribe to pro blah, blah, blah. Okay, so I've, I'm attached somewhere. Bloody hell, I'm attached. Um, it keeps reinstating me. So where is my customer for YouTube revenue cap? Okay, so I definitely have a customer here still left over, which I can't seem to find. Come on, I need to find it. I, I have to show you this. I have to show you it before we finish up. So renewal, two minutes ago. Okay, so it's not. it seems to not be killing the user. So yeah, see it's confirm, delete. And then let's refresh. Again, sandbox data. Okay. Let's go to here. Clear purchase history. And I just want to double check one more time. Sandbox data. Okay. So if I refresh now, Sandbox they are okay. So now we should see our introductory price. Basically, I've just I, I just I haven't got the I'm not resetting my user in the correct way. If it shows again, yeah. So I'm actually bloody subscribed. Okay. So in this case, I just can't seem to find my user here. But basically, what would happen is if I deleted the user, you would see exactly what I'm saying to you, right? So in that case, it would work. So sandbox. Oh wait a second, I can see him. Yes, yeah. See, I don't actually have it accessed. It's just a case of, it's just taking a little bit of time. Sandbox purchase. Okay, that's fine. Uh, bear in mind, guys, I do also have um, a few. My Sandbox account is attached to a few different builds here. So revenue count, maybe it's this one. 
Yeah, so okay, so I have got a user in another app. That's probably why actually. So let's delete this user as well. I just want I have to try and fix it, honestly. It's bothering me so much on the live. I'm gonna try and wrap this up and then we're gonna do it. Okay, so now Okay, so I think that was died out anyway. And pop them demo. Okay. Now that's good. And then let's try this one more time. Oh, no, that's not this one. Okay. So let's go ahead and I was about to touch my bloody laptop screen. <laughs> okay. Anyway, if it doesn't work, you know it's you know how to basically replicate. Okay, you know what? I am not even finding the bloody user right now. So at some point, I've just my, the demo gods are against me, and I think it's just renewing my test data, my sandbox data is a bit of a and they're caught in a bit of a loop. Yeah, see, it just keeps on doing it, thinking I'm bloody renewed. Okay, let's just do it one more time. And let's just go ahead and back to overview. Let's just try one more time. If not, it's completely fine. I've shown you how to do it and you can do it yourself. It will work on yours. I've got like so much random test data and random things in the app that it's, it's definitely missing, messing this up. Where I've constantly tried to break it. Let's do this again. Okay. So if I click on add an exercise, and then I click on start a one week free trial. If this doesn't pop up, then we know that it's just, okay. I mean, yeah, for me, that was you currently subscribed. Okay. So it's just a rainbow. Okay. That's fine. So in this case, yeah, basically if on your devices, I'm telling you it'll work. Uh, I've got like three different projects, loads of test data where I've been testing this thing out. That's why if you had one project, it, it really never gave me an issue. So make sure you definitely give that a try because that's how you get the free trial method working. And as you can see, we can definitely sign up, which is the main thing, right? And then basically that intro offer doesn't require anything special. It just means that if it detects a new user has come onto the platform, then it will be like, oh, okay, it's your first time buying monthly. Here's a free week. And then afterwards you'll get charged the full amount. But otherwise guys, that was absolutely incredible. We covered so much in today's build. It was nuts. All right, we're almost at 600 likes. I'm just gonna run through finally. We had different screens different uh, we made a custom hook we use typescript in a bunch of different ways you learn how to deploy to eas service you have things running on your local device so much stuff has happened and you can finally add in-app purchases to your react native apps which is damn amazing and incredible so i hope you've enjoyed that it's been a lot of fun on today's stream as well to go ahead and host um let me find our wrap out song I can't, I can't actually see my, where the, why is the pop farm song right here? There we go. All right, you know how we got there. We got to end it the right way, right? Thank you so much, guys, for tuning in. This has been your boy, Papa Rat. And as I mentioned, if any of this went over your head and you want more practice, more experience, make sure you check out Zero to Full Stack Hero, our flagship course, right? This is where we carry out everything. You know, we teach you tons and tons of stuff. We've got an amazing new community app that is absolutely incredible. Some of the members are right now in the uh, Papa Fam here. And then if you haven't already checked out, check out the University of Code. It's our new e uh, daily newsletter. Absolutely sick, by the way. Right, so the University of Code is absolutely awesome. You basically get coding problems delivered to your inbox every single day. So you're basically getting a coding challenge and then the next day you get a solution to the challenge. And it's just a monthly subscription. You can join it. You can, uh, and we already have over a thousand members inside of this, by the way, and they love it. So make sure you check it out. Uh, the University of Code. So it's papareact.com forward slash University Code. James Tuttle's literally loving the Daily Code emails in the chat right now. So definitely go check that out. And as I mentioned there before, guys, if you want to join us over at the full course, make sure you go check out forward slash papareact.com forward slash course. And I will see you inside. You can hear from some of our members in the video. And yeah, as always, guys, it's been an absolute blessing to teach you guys. And this was your introduction into in-app purchases in React Native. As always, guys, I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for tuning in. Smash the like button, subscribe, and turn on your notifications because I'm dropping more content more frequently. Crazy amount of stuff's happening this year. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.
love again Just the two of us and we could stay up all night 